I like loud pipes, big rims, holes, ice. B twelves are better. No ish, strictly leather. Play station dvd don't worry about your bitch she coming with me lead a sticker on the bentley to show the price arm hanging out the window to show the ice fresh wait hold up that's that bitch we fuck what it what your bank about dog i been lost count pop that chris pop that mo slap that bitch pump damn uh what's it fuck Hold on, everybody get your motherfucking roll on. Damn, bro, you almost had it. Almost had that shit. Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy Fresco. Follow me on Instagram at Fresco Fame and on Twitter at Fresco Ben Famous B I N Famous. Dig that. And I'm your boy Flaw Seven Hundred, and that's on A Thing, A K A Flaw Claw Van Dam, also known as Flaw Cigar. Oh! And this is the Podcast Brothers Episode One Hundred. Hey yo, on your ass, toast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Woo. A yeah. hundred episodes, man. Congratulations, bro. Congra- hey, congratulations to you too, man. Yeah, man. A hundred episodes in. <sighs> thanks, ev- thanks, years. thanks for everybody. Thanks to everybody for rocking with us, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Appreciate everybody who's. Been aboard this journey from day one, and those who came along the way and started supporting us. You know what I'm saying, as we started becoming a little more fluent um, with the podcast, and you know, with the growth of it as well. So, thank we'll, you, motherfuckers. And we'll thank get you. and we'll get more into that in a little bit. But you know, first off, we got to do our um, introductions more into the shows. I just want to say something real quick. The podcast brothers will no longer be playing music on the podcast. Uh, we got flagged on YouTube two weeks in a row. Hate is real. Um, so basically, uh, YouTube, It's if you don't know, YouTube is changing. It's like a streaming service like Tidal and Apple and Spotify. Like YouTube just ain't that spot that you want to go to to just upload music and think shit's sweet. They're actually copywriting all the music that you guys are uploading. Like they like so last week I played a lot of Rita Franklin. I played a lot of um music from the nineties and I made sure to look for music that was uploaded by like a third party user, like a regular person. And he flagged me anyway. And you know what they told me? They sent me an email. Don't worry, Mr. Podcast Brother. Because you know it's one of those right. generic emails. So mm-hmm. They just know your title. So don't worry, Mr. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> your page is not in danger but if you're monetizing a universal will um get all the monetization that's not happening fuck that i'm not no more music on the show um also the the volume was kind of like trash so if you're like one of the first few hundred because on sunday the episode get downloaded quick like i'll wake up to a few hundred downloads you know shout out to the people who have subscribe to us on apple Podcasts. who get the episode as soon as uh five o'clock in the morning sunday morning hits so for those of you who got that trash ass episode first i apologize (laughs) we are 100 episodes in and guess what stuff like that is unacceptable shout out to um Jaden the great he let me know um shout out to uh empress journey she let me know big j let me know last week that the music was kind of like drowning us out that shit not cool 100 episodes in so that ain't happening so you're just gonna get all audio and a few drops from your boys such as bullshit yeah mm. shout out to the drop all of that <laughs> all of that bullshit, of that. bullshit. <laughs> that was fresco on the drop like yo th- it, it popped in my head i was like let me go find that but yeah so no more music you know um youtube blocked us nobody could listen to the episode on youtube because they blocked us so which I don't, which doesn't make sense because they say U- Universal was going to make bread off of us, then they blocked us. But you ain't got to worry about that no more because we good. Um, Fuck them. Yeah, uh, one more thing. Simple for me. Um, Fuck. Thebrotherspod.com is where you can find 
um, all the previous all episodes. the previous episodes. I'm going to start uploading more videos to that. I'm going to we're going to start blogging it. We're going to start blogging it. Yeah, I okay. haven't had time. I haven't had time really to sit down and um. Okay. Between work and and, and 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 my son, I haven't really had time to do the proper research for a lot of stuff that I want to write about. I, I wanted to write an article about LeBron's school and him open that up, but I just I, didn't, I wasn't able to find the time to do it. But it is on my agenda. It is still on my to do list. Not that particular topic, but just you know, back to blogging on the website to get some more traffic created. I'm um, saying for the site. So and, yeah, um, one more thing. I want to give a shout out to Joe Button. And the Joe Button Podcast, um, come September, come the middle of September, they're going to be exclusively on Spotify. Spotify, Spotify. The deal is amazing, and it inspires independent podcasters such as us. You know, you know, what's the deal? The deal is basically is an exclusive deal for Spotify, and if you on a streaming service, you kind of get like um, it's kind of like album numbers. So for Joe Button to do five hundred thousand episodes per episode. Five thousand plays per episode. Yeah, something like that. Like yeah. he 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 gets up there. Mm-hmm. So for you to drop twice in a week now, and so you basically go on platinum every week. Right. That's platinum dollars. Like 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 you'll drop an, like album, an album and go platinum, right. and bank. Uh, imagine going platinum twice, fifty two weeks out of a year. Podcast platinum on your ass. <laughs> so I like Hashtag like podcast platinum. So. The, the the numbers haven't really been explained, but hey, podcast goals, man. And and I've been championing Joe Button for a minute. I've been telling people. People still want to make jokes to pump it up. I I've been telling people like pump, like, like, pump, <laughs> pumps, 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 pump, pump it up. Just please. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that, man. So we can get into all weeks, man. You wanna go first? My week was pretty cool. Um no oh, wait. My week was mad regular. Ain't shit happened this week. Oh, shit. Last... <laughs> I'm just gonna be <laughs> I was thinking about last week and shit. My week was kinda regular. Um I was supposed to go to Wild and Out last night. What happened? I changed my mind. Wait, wait, wait. So we got a we got a segment coming up with about Luda and he actually did the drop last night, I believe. Or or am I bugging? I'm probably bugging. I don't think that was last I don't night. Think probably was pre recorded. When I read when I read the the, the guest list for wilding out for last night's show, I, think, I believe it was in Philly. It was um, the musical guest was Joe Gotti and YFN Lucci. Okay, proceed. Yeah, so I was gonna go, man, but it started at eight. I didn't get off work until eight, and then I would have rushed to go home and get dressed, and then rush to Philly. Like I didn't feel like doing all that, so I decided to be a nerd, and I went to Barnes and Noble instead, so I could read my book. How much money did you waste? Thirty dollars. Yeah, thirty dollars ain't worth. Me sweating out the shower, running to the, right. Yeah, yeah, it's right. not worth it. I'm gonna be all uncomfortable and shit. Y'all like, know y'all hate a sh- y'all hate a sweaty shower. Like I just got out. Yeah, I just shit. got out the shower yeah. and I'm sweating. Like I need to be able to take my time. Yeah, niggas don't like sweaty you know showers. Nah, the, 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 <laughs> nah not at all. Showers. The tickets was a gift though. Like you know what I'm saying, I was going with someone, but fuck, she she was cool with it too. It's like fuck it, nah, nigga. Fuck it. So um, other than that, man, I just so. I'm on my Game of Thrones saga with my reading. I'm like 48 pages from finishing the second book. And all I can focus on is finishing this fucking book. Like, I want to close it. I want to see the hardback of this book cover so I can start the third one. Because I'm really on it. Like, seriously on it. And the book is so much more. It's, the book is better than the goddamn show. It's way more detailed. It's crazy. I didn't think I could fall more in love with this damn show. But here comes this book. and sucked me right back into the damn story. I'm at the part in the book. Where Arya is escaping from Harrenhal, but it's not the same as it was in the show. It's kind of it's different. Like Jakar Hagar gave her her three wishes and killed the guards and got her out. She she murk niggas herself, <laughs> and Harrenhal got the fuck about it. There. But anyway, I ain't gonna go too deep. If you win it, you win it. If you're not, you're not. So fuck it. But um, Game of Thrones book two, I'm almost finished. Moving on to book three. And um, yeah, that's 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 pretty much it, man. So I I'll catch Wildin' out another time. That's fine. If I'd have got to work earlier in the afternoon, I'd have been cool. But I ain't with all that Russian shit. I'm gonna do something. You good, right? Yeah, I'm gonna do something for the first time in a hundred episodes. I forgot to mention something last week, so I'm going to mention what I forgot last week this week, and it's going to count as this week. Okay, I'm taking because shot. it's a, because it's a gym in there. Last week I was. Uh, Rare Breeze had a pay-per-view battle rap, and Murder Mook was on the card. 
So shout out to uh, those who know who Murder Mook is. You know, he's a battle rapper. He battled Averb. And I was watching it on Facebook. Somebody was streaming it. And somebody that I bumped into was actually streaming it. So it was like, hey, pay $50 out of my pocket or watch homies joint from his phone to his TV. It's not the best quality, but I got the picture. Sounds about right. I bring that up to say this. He had about 300 people watching his um, video. And what he didn't tell us was he was charging people $5. So he was like, yo, I'm going to let y'all. And, and, and it wasn't just Mook versus Verb. It was the whole card. Right. So, so we was watching a bunch of stuff. So while you watching the battle, crispy clear, he was just like, yo, I'm going to start charging $5. Okay, no big deal. I will cash app you five smackers. <laughs> it's better than paying 50. Right. But then I looked at his viewers. He had 300 people, bro. He paid $50 for that pay-per-view. He'd been eating. He charged 300 people $5. That's 300 times five. 1500 Am I right? I, I don't know. I hate doing math off the top of the head. Let's go with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So 1500 Son. Do you smell? Do you did you do you hear that flip? I'm going to pay fifty dollars, and in return, I'm going to get fourteen fifty back. I'm cool with that, son. I'm looking at that shit like, what's that meme from um that meme from the wire? I mean, it was like, oh yeah, yeah like that, yo, that gift. meme, yeah, that that, that gift. When, my bad. When when, when, gift. when he found out that the cop they shot the uh, the show that they did cop in the shoot they shot in the shootout was a cop. And he found out she was a cop and he shot her. He was, oh, wee baby. I think that was. Why didn't I think of that? So for all of you who need an extra penny or something, man, that was one hell of a flip he did. You should you should do that the next time. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Might as well. Four, he came up with 14. The flip was crazy. But I actually had to step out. So I didn't even get a chance to watch um, Mook versus Verb. When was that? Last Saturday. Okay. Yep. And I actually got to watch two battles for free, but that was still five dollars worth. Like, Bro, only paid five dollars, so right. it is what it was. So that's that. And I was definitely going to talk about that last I'm week. I'm cool with them waiting. I'm cool with waiting till it come out on YouTube. This was Mook versus Verbs, huh? Like, now I had to watch that. That shit's still gonna be on YouTube now. It is, but <laughs> like in a week, it'll be on YouTube. As far as that, man, my week was cool, man. You know, my week was cool. Um, and I got a message for you guys. Do not friend request me. Right. And then inbox me. Say, hey, do me a favor. It don't work that way. I don't know what you're on. I don't know what type of marketing. Wait, what is happened? That. A nigga friend requested me. Right. A fellow. I, I guess like we're we're in the media business. So you get rappers and promoters, people inbox, people f- send you friend requests. I get that. But don't let your first message be, yo, bro, can you do me a favor? No, no, <laughs> it's not happening. What kind of favor he asked for? He basically, because I, cause I ignored it, but he wound up coming back. Was like, "Yo, can you go to this? Can you can you listen to my boy's song? He's a few plays away from such and such number." No, not at all. It's not happening. That's not the way you do business. If you're his manager, you need to be fired. Well, send me the friend request. What and would you it, tell him to do? I will, yeah, send me the friend request and just lead the music up. Right. I'm going to go check your page out. Because I'm like, who the fuck is this? Yeah, anyway, who is you? Right? <laughs> and if I like what I see, I might click a link. I do that. Like, I might just click a link. You might not even know. If I click your link and I rock with it, I'll inbox you. It's like, yo, I listen to your joint. Or I'll screenshot it and show you that I listen. I always suck my teeth in uh, <laughs> annoyance when I see a, a grown man I don't know send me a fan request. What the fuck is this? That's one thing I do not do. <laughs> I do not say, listen. I do not send no man. Like, if you're not doing something, right? like, if, if you're not a rapper or you're in a podcaster or something like that, I will not send you a friend request and I will not follow you on social media. Only women. Like, women is just a random, like, just randomly. Okay. Right. I'll follow you. <laughs> I'll oh, friend request you. Hey, okay. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. But, yeah, I, yeah. but is this a guy? But if it's I don't just a know? guy, no, I'm nah. not just going to send you a friend request. It's awkward. Yeah, it's very awkward. Oh, Pretty okay. much. I feel like when a random guy likes, well, I don't know. It depends on what you're doing with your life. Like, if you not really doing nothing, you just posting selfies and shit. I'm like, hey, this guy looks pretty good. I'll follow him. Like, yeah, that's not, what the fuck you're saying. Like, yeah, right, right. Like, right. What, hey, fellow, what made you want to follow me? Like, if you're not going to listen to my shows, as you see, I'm either training or I'm promoting my show. So if you're not really about none of that, <laughs> why are you? Flossigo. 
<laughs> you already know. Oh man. Um, what yeah, else? This always strike me as weird. Yeah. So I've never done it. I'm, I'm glad I'm not alone. Cause I be on Facebook trying to. Cause right, I promote the show on Facebook, but man, then I'm like, I it, got like 400 followers because I had to restart my whole page over because I deleted my old one. Don't ask me why. Um, well, it was because of a gig I was trying to get, and I didn't want them to see that I was friends with goons and goblins. So I created a whole <laughs> new page. <laughs> so I created a whole new page. And now I'm just like, F it. I'm about to just get my numbers up because how can you promote a show if you don't have people to promote the show in front of? Right. So as I go through people to friend requests, I'm just requesting all women. I'm not going to friend request any men. Man, I have to know you. I don't even accept friend requests like that from niggas that I do know. So <laughs> that shit will sit in that fucking friend request <laughs> box for I don't know how long. But anyway, um, what else did I do this week? I watched a few movies. I watched the movie with Gabrielle shot, Union. Man. Breaking in. How'd you like it? I fell asleep on it. Yeah, all right. Well, I watched it, and I was like, this is like Bruce Willis hostage all over again. Yeah, you ever I see just, Bruce Willis hostage? I, yeah, like 10 years Great ago. Great fucking movie, but I felt like it was the same the same exact deal. The same crazy guy, the same guy who thought he was in charge, really wasn't. The crazy guy ended up taking him out. Didn't the house catch? Oh, you didn't see the end. I think the house caught on fire. Too. I fell asleep on it. I was just tired. I might try to watch it again. Shout out to people with Showbox. All the movies is on there. And I get to stream the movie from my la- uh, from my tablet to the TV. It wasn't That's a pretty bad dope. movie. Like It wasn't like, what the fuck is this? It it's wasn't not, a bad it's, movie. It, but it wasn't like... It's not a bad movie. Super you, edgy. It's not a bad either. movie if you watch it for free in your home. But if you got to pay a ticket to watch that... Like, come on. All right. Well, yeah, that's a different. And I'm sorry. It. I'm sorry that it had to be you, Gabby. But that was a terrible movie. Why you don't, are you sorry? Because it's Gabby. You ain't make it. What the but fuck it's Gabby, you sorry though, for, man. man. Like, like you want to support. You want to support black. You actors, did support man. it. You watched it. That's for what I free. told that you. That wasn't. I didn't support but that movie. But that's why I was telling you before we had this. We had these many conversations about certain um, African American celebrities. And the product in which they produce for our entertainment, yeah, I I would like to support you because we share the same skin uh, complexion. But if it's not good, <sighs> yeah, <laughs> like if it's not, good, shit got to be of quality. Like it's I got to be, be able good. to enjoy this shit. That's all. So I watched um, that. I tried to watch it at least, and then I tried to watch Tagged. The fuck is that? That's the movie. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. These motherfuckers actually play tag. Yeah, yeah. Grown that ass shit is man. hilarious, actually. I don't know. Maybe It's mad goofy. Yeah, it's dumb as hell. It's, it's like, goofy as fuck, but the, it was kind of funny. The things that they do to avoid being tagged, like these niggas jumping off of fire escapes. Acting like grandmothers in the yeah. mall and shit. Like you dressing up as somebody's boy. grandma. Because, but they yeah. boy never got tagged the whole time they've been playing this game. He was like 30 and 0. Like 30 years and old. I can see why. I can see with my nah, man ass nah. in the mall. I like, got to get you, bro. We going, like, if we playing this game for 30 years and I ain't got, I'm mad as fuck. I'm so going me, through extreme limps to tag your ass. So let Pause. me ask you this then. If it's if it's that hard to tag him, are you signing that waiver for his wedding? Or are you like, fuck that? Wait, what was the waiver again? You can't tag him during the wedding. You can't tag him during oh, the no, wedding no, no. or the reception. Nope. Nope. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not signing that. Nah. No. I'm telling you right now. This it, shit ain't right. Either that or I can't come to the wedding. Yeah. And if I don't come to the wedding, it means I don't sign the waiver, which means I'm coming to I'm the coming wedding. Anyway, I'm coming anyway. I'm coming anyway to tag your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Pause. <laughs> yeah, I thought it did. But yeah, it was a good movie. I mean, uh, hilarious movie. It's just goofy white boy shit. Yeah, I got to I, I gotta watch it again. I was just doing some things um, earlier. You so never watch. I'm always multitasking. Bro. Right. And you never just sit and watch a movie unless it's Avengers. I'm trying. Because remember all those times you'd be like, Yo, did, did you see this movie? I'm like, no, I didn't watch it. Bro, it's hard for me to sit and watch movies. It, it, it just is. Like like when I watch El like I gotta sit and focus when I watch El Chapo because it's in Spanish because I gotta read the subtitles. That's the only time I'm focused. Okay, <laughs> it is what it is. All right, all right, That's man. So who we you can, are? We can actually just get into this week's episode. Let's man. go once 100. again. This is episode one hundred, man. One hundred. A lot of people was wondering why we didn't uh, take any uh, phone calls or drops or whatever. I mean, we just celebrated the. Uh, podcast the live, show. the live show and Two we just didn't want to uh put any pressure on the people who already came out and showed us wild love in person to call us again and tell us the same thing that they told us last year or or told us at the live show so you know we're right. good we just did a live show a few weeks ago so you don't want to oversaturate yourself. right right you know like yo just last week we had mad people come out to show us love now you want the same people to be like yo man y'all dope we know how y'all feel about us man we don't you know 
So it is what it is on that. We, Hold on to that love for another time. Facts. I was just about to say that. We appreciate <laughs> y'all. That. Say that love for another time because we're going to need it, man. Because this ain't hard. And what I want to do for this entire episode is pay homage to all of the segments that we had. Um, boo doop 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 as we grew to trying to figure out who we wanted to be. Cause we just started podcasting and didn't know what the shit we was doing. Not um, a damn, not a bit. My pops used to, um, we used to go in my pop studio and now we do our own thing. So, you know, that's growth right there. How many of the, how many, um, episodes did we record at your pops crib before you started grabbing the, all the, all the tools for yourself? The last episode I think we did was either with rain or mama yoga. So about 35, I think it was, yeah, it was even, okay. Because uh, DE um, came through to my crib. Right. And that was 36, I think. Mm-hmm. So since episode 36, we've been doing our own thing. Independent for real. Skyrocket. So one of the segments that um, we want to bring back, and this was one was recent, and I might bring this back, is the clap form, man. Clap form. Clap form. And who we clapping for this week? Every day. And who we're clapping for this week? The podcast. Why not? A hundred episodes, man. A hundred episodes. Hundred. A hundred and two if you count the bonuses. And we almost didn't make it. We We would have been on like a hundred and ten right now if we didn't have that gap. A little gap in time. Was it? Was it only? It was like a month. A month, probably or something like that. Okay, it's like a month. Um, the journey was definitely long, and not even just between us as brothers, but just the time. The dedication. Do you know what it's like? And for, for and, sh- and shout out to the other podcasters for coming up with material every week. Yeah, a hundred episodes 100. of new material, and try not to sound like last week, and try not to sound like you're trash, and try not to tell the same jokes, the s- whoa, the same, say the same words, not make a penny off of it because you're passionate about podcasting. So basically, what we're telling you, motherfuckers, is, is the shit is original every goddamn week with new material. Shit is hard. Er week. And at the end of the day, um, when was it? Um, it was in June 2016. We did it, and we had a great-ass time. And I remember we went to Miami, like, the week after that. or The, the week day we came back from Miami, we recorded, like, episode three. And we was like, nah, we're not taking a week off. We got to right. record. We yeah. was fresh off the plane. Yeah. That's we how, that's how yeah. dedicated we were. Yeah. The first time I was like, yo, this shit is dope. The first time I did that was episode five. I think Snook came down with the camera. Yeah, and we had Ernie down Ernie there. Down Shout out to Ernie Lane, and we had uh, Cyril down there. It was my first time meeting him. Shout out to the homie Cyril out in China. You and did. I was late to it, so when I came down in my pop's basement, y'all were already down there setting up. I'm like, yo, this shit is dope. Yeah, never been around nothing like this. It was dope. It was like being around your own production set. Yo, it, it was fire. It was the first time we got recorded. It was the first time we had like just like the guests. Like I mean, we had um, Taj. Shout out to Pastor Taj. We had King Dean. Shout out to King Ding. Oh, by the way, speaking of King Ding, shout out to my little brother Ding. He's expecting his first child uh, very soon. We got the gender reveal going down this weekend, so I'm excited for that. Yeah, this Sunday. So, yeah, but just coming down and seeing what I saw, man, just really warmed my heart. And I was like, yo, this is fire. It was a lot. It's all, every every episode, and it's always been a lot of fun, like, talking to different people. Or even, honestly, shit, even talking to you, because listening to you talk... Growing up, I was like, I never thought I would hear this motherfucker talk so much. If it wasn't for the podcast, bro, I probably would have nothing to say. No, I never I would have nothing to say. Before we started doing the podcast, like Jarrell's that kind of nigga. He'll call you. He don't say hello or nothing. You answer the phone. You'll be like, hello. He'll be like, yo, can you do such and such? <laughs> but like, nah, I ain't even home. All right, click. No bye. <laughs> No, but here's the no later but, on or nothing. But here's Click. the real story, though. The real story is I just told the real story. No, no. Here's the real story. The real story is though, I would and I've and I've told a few people this. I don't know if I told you, but I think I belong in the background. I think I do my thing on podcasts, and I think people like me. I bring something to the table, but I would like I really think that I could be somebody behind the scenes and have like you and somebody with a person like. Three more personalities like you with somebody having like some substance like me, but can present it better. Because, yo, when you do 100 episodes, it's 100 episodes of you listening to yourself like, shit, I hate my voice. You don't Why like did your I voice? S- I don't like my voice. Like, it took me a while to even listen to our own 
shows because it's like, oh man. This is the part I messed up on. I don't want to hear this no more. Turn it off. Turn it off. I don't right. want to hear it. Certain, certain topics I don't like to hear myself speak on, but I force myself to listen to it so I can become comfortable with hearing it. Because regardless if you're listening or not, you already said it. The people are already listening. But the people so you, like it. The people love Listen, the people right. love us. So why you why you, why you you coming down on yourself? That, you, you, nigga, you talk how you talk. That's probably inse- but that's probably an insecurity that I brought A hundred episodes podcast. in. A hundred. You still insecure about how your voice sounds. Facts. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is... You better drink some goddamn tea and straighten up. (laughs) Yo, I'm just saying, like, those are just some things. I'm like, yo, maybe maybe I should be in the background because, I don't know, there's just, you know, just some things that I was thinking about. So when you say I haven't heard him speak this much in in forever, like, it's like, yeah, you're right. And sometimes I'll be wild, uncomfortable, like, yo, I just want to produce this stuff. I don't really want to talk on the podcast. Yeah. Like, I just wish, you know, I just had more time... Because when you go from not articulating yourself to articulating to, to, to just it's, doing it, it's a curve. It's like, God damn. Yeah. It's I didn't curve. know I had so much to say. Well, I've always, I've never really cared much for like being in the, in the front, but I've never like not like when, when, when the situation comes up and it's like, well, this is what you got to do. I'd rather just do it and get it done and be over with than be like, oh, no, I don't want to do it. Like, no. Like, I just feel like it makes it worse after that. So, after a while, I just start, I just start caring what people really have to say, man. The, the part of me that makes the part of me that makes it comfortable for me to speak so freely is from growing up and not feeling like I I could express myself either from not having people understand what I had to say or just not giving a fuck about what I had to say. And I just had to find that confident line within myself to say how I felt unapologetically, regardless of how anyone else felt about it. And once I felt like I knew. I knew what I was talking about and I knew I was speaking for myself and you know what I'm saying? Everything that I try to say is more, you know what I'm saying? I try to s- speak factually. I don't know if that's a word, but it fit. I try to actual, speak actual factual. You feel me? I try to speak factually as best as possible and I'm also open to criticism. So it's, I don't really feel like there's a lot that people could say to me to make me feel like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not as smart as I believe I am. So as long as I feel confident in what I'm saying, I can say whatever the fuck so I want. So besides the differences between you and I, I think we speak on that a lot. Besides the differences between Give you and I, I and what we, you, this nigga said he wanted one shot and he on his third, you probably sh- fourth. You shitting the grease me up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just want one shot. I got a lot on my stomach. <laughs> now this nigga- I just came from Starbucks and shit. I had a frappuccino with a big ass sugar cookie. <laughs> then I had some weed. I was like, uh, let me slow. Then you said, you want a shot? I said, well, you, well, you know, well, shit. Let's do it. But anyway, I'm listening. But yeah, um, besides what we had going on, I think we spoke on that a lot. What was some things you had to sacrifice or what were some hard things that you had to do to get to episode 100? Um, some, sometimes, sometimes a nigga just ain't feel like recording. There would be days I would have bad days of work. There would be days I would be emotionally disturbed. There would be days where I just don't feel like talking because I talk all day at work and everything like that. So seeing how hard and how consistent you were and knowing that if you was going to be there, then I would always be able to bounce off your conversation. So it was like, you know what? Fuck it. Every time I don't feel like recording, I go and record and I always end up having a good ass time. So it's like, what the fuck would you be doing anyway? Sitting home? Like doing nothing. I don't really be doing much on Friday nights. I've dedicated my Friday nights to the podcast. So that after the last two years, no, first it was Wednesdays, right? Sunday. It was Sundays at first. Yeah, Sunday. We was dropping on. We was never dropping on a Wednesday or a Monday at some point. No, we 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 recorded on Sunday and we dropped on Sunday. Part of me feels like you're lying a little bit, but okay. We ain't never recording no goddamn Wednesday. I didn't say record. I said drop. Now we ain't never drop on a Wednesday. It was always Sunday. All right. And when I tried to, and it's another thing, just, you know, when I was like, yo, we should do something different. And these are things that we just would disagree on. Nah, I like Sunday. So we stayed Sunday because I was just like, yeah, maybe we should drop during a weekday. Because, like, Sunday is tough for us to drop. Even though we're like an on-demand show where you can listen to it any time. It's just like people are actually doing things on Sunday. So that's the risk of dropping on Sunday. Yeah. You know, if you drop on Monday, people are at work. And when they get the notification, they ready to go. But it is what it is because right. that's what. Apple uh, podcast is for download it and listen to it whenever you want. Yeah, but c- continue. But I um, but yeah, I just um, 
I just uh, forgot what the fuck I was saying. Thank you. <laughs> well, you asked me a question about when do we drop. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, Wednesday. You said we drop on Wednesday, and you said that you didn't want to record, but seeing Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the question was asking. So, yeah, so seeing how uh, dedicated you were and always being on top of it, you know what I'm saying? It was like, all right, let me f- fuck it. I always end up having a good time anyway. Let me get over my little uh, my little attitude or whatever, and you know what I'm saying? Just make shit happen. So being prepared and making sure that I was consistent, just as consistent as you, so we could try to put out the best quality possible. So, yeah. And yeah. I know I, I never said, I, and it feels weird saying it, but I know that, you know what I'm saying, my personality on the show is a big part of what we got going on. And I ain't going to say it's always hard to do it, but sometimes I, I don't feel like it. It's like it's like that comedian who you who you see in public that time, but today he don't feel like being funny. <laughs> like, then when you try to go, hey, man, can I get a picture? Nah, man, I don't feel like taking a picture. Nah, I'm chilling. Well, fuck you then. Pussy ass bitch, you corny anyway. <laughs> it's like damn, I, I, all right, man. Like whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was, it was, it was, was kind of that thing. So, I, um, yeah, I just made myself uh, get up and do it. I definitely feel you because it be times where I just be sitting on the couch, like, all right, and then you come down, it's like, all right, it's go time. But yeah, I, I be sitting here, like, you know what? Nah, I don't do this shit, man. Right. Nah. <laughs> but then you know, it's like, all right, you come down, and it's like I start. Touching the keyboard, I'm like, okay, it's like I wake up, like I get a, right. like I get a sip of caffeine just by touching the keyboard. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, I, I always say, man, you put me in a position where I'm able to speak freely with no holds barred. I'm, I'm gonna be good every fucking time. I just, I just, I just really want you to know that a hundred episodes is not easy. Um, you know, just like we said early in the show, we almost didn't make it. Um, but one thing that nobody never tell you about is the hard times when it comes to being successful for those of you who don't listen to the podcast brothers yet and when we do make it you're just going to see us on a platform smiling and happy but y'all aren't going to know what it took for us to get to this level you understand what i'm saying like people people around us the pod squad pod squad hey um um, so you know, pe- people know what what it took for us to get to 100, man. And I just want to clap for us, man, for making it to 100 episodes. We made it. We made it. That's right, y'all. We made it. We made it. You want to know what's crazy? That's one of the songs that came out in the year 2000 that I wanted to play. But guess what? We can play it oh, because man. Universal is going to flag us. That's trash. Flag, but flag me. One thing Fucker. that I got from podcasting that I'm proud of is therapy. Um, you've been to therapy. I've been to therapy, and we come out as totally different men. Like, like we people talk about a third eye, and I don't know what that means. But man, you kind of wait. You kind of walk out with an extra eye. Like, God damn. Right. I can see clearly now. The, the rain, rain is, is gone. gone. Yeah, bitch. I'm not done yet. Uh-oh. I can see all oh, wow. the obstacles in my way. Wow. I'm not done. <laughs> Gone all the cloudy skies. <laughs> I wasn't done. <laughs> Please hurry up and fucking finish. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> um, therapy played a huge part into the man that I am today, and I love it. And... Just watching how other people move, especially black men in the black community, you can look at a man and be like, bro, I can tell you need some therapy on how you handle your situations. But you don't want to throw it on people because that's just, the T word is a sensitive word. And it's kind of, it's a little rude. It, it, it is. It's you don't just rude. tell somebody that. Yo, bro, uh, you ever thought about rude. therapy? Hey, um, you need therapy, you nigga. Need fuck wrong with therapy. you. Wait, what the fuck you mean? Everybody hits different points in their lives and everybody handles that shit differently. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't know. They, they don't need know. therapy until there's like no other option. It's like, yo, I need somebody to talk to. I don't feel comfortable talking about this with nobody around me. I just need an unbiased ear with no opinion as to who I am. And let me weigh these problems on you. So one thing that I want to talk about is a question that I don't know how long we can touch on this. I don't know. I don't know how much leg this has, but I just have a question. Can you be a successful black father without therapy? Can you be from the hood? Can you be a successful black father from the hood, from the from from the mud, without therapy? Um, I just feel like bef- even before you get to be a father, you as a person, you as a man, if you have trauma in your life, if you have 
experiences that you have had in your life and you haven't really handled those scenarios, you're damaged. So you could end up making, you know what I'm saying, an incorrect move in your life based on not handling those negative or those traumatic experiences that you had in your life. So I think that can affect. I don't I, I don't think that's necessarily say that you can't be a good father if you have traumatic experiences and haven't talked to a therapist or anyone about it, but it could possibly hinder the advice that you give to your kids, you know what I'm saying, when they're going through situations because now you feel guarded and if you find your kid coming across a, a similar scenario, you might tell them to do what you're doing to keep from them experiencing what what you experience, but it don't necessarily always work like that. So that's exactly what I'm hitting at. Like as a father and as a as, as a black father, you'll you'll be there for your kids for most part. But there's probably some things you can't give your children that they need and, and that's that emotional energy that men do have. Right. That that talk that they need. I got emotional energy. I know it. I tell all my friends, anybody who knows me you know all the time, I tell them, yo, look, if I feel some kind of way, I'ma tell you. Not even good or bad. Like, I'ma tell you. Like, yo, I fucks you, that shit is fine, keep doing what you're doing. Or if I see you going through a situation, if I feel like we're good enough for me to tell you what I feel like, you know what I'm saying? where you are in the situation, I'll, I'll tell you. And okay. I never mean no malice. I always come from a place of genuineness. So if you don't want to hear it, cool. Tell me. I'd never say another motherfucking word unless you ask. What Even I, then I might tell you the back to What I up. mean by that is this. Your son is a teenager. Oh, God, please don't have them years of my life. <laughs> He's got his heart broken by a girl. Is your conversation man up, man? Man up, son. Like, this happens all the time. Or, you, or, or can you actually have the conversation with your son and tell him that it's all right to hurt? And I really think you talk about the first time, right? The f- any time, like it ain't gonna be six, seven times later. And she, he like, Dad, she broke my heart. Listen, nigga, listen. Yeah, bro, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen, over nigga. time, like hey, you know what? This is the eighth time. Listen, nigga, listen. I'll you ain't learned from the first six, seven, <laughs> nine bitches that played you little dumb ass. I tried to give you the game, you ain't won it. Now you sitting here all soaking because that's the kind of advice that black fathers get. It. That's the kind of advice that some fathers. I'm not going to just label this as black, but we're black fathers. So I want to talk about black fathers. So that's kind of the some of the advice that black fathers fathers get their kids like what you like what you thought nigga you thought she loved you she ain't love you was part of the game i'm just saying that when your children need that advice we don't have it for them because we don't know how to get in touch with the side that they actually want that they need to talk to uh i i I don't think i have that problem i'm pretty open with conversation and i never want my kid to feel like he can't bring anything to me you know what i'm saying like I'm a very non-judgmental person. Like my friends can come to me with any scenario that they got going on and want to talk about it and I won't look at them crazy because I know I done did some shit that I feel like would be crazy if I explained it and I don't want somebody who I'm trusting with this piece of my information in my life to make me feel crazy as I'm telling it to you. I never fucking talk to you again. And that's like and that's like me. Like I've had sex conversations with my son and my daughter on an immature level and on a mature level. Mm-hmm. When you first tell your daughter, when you first talk to your daughter, what do you say? You don't be, don't have sex until you're 30. Right. It's the dumb things that we say that right. don't make no sense, but we don't really know. That's going to want to make her have sex at half that age anyway. Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> I, was just... I got to take a shot. <laughs> I got to take a shot. But the conversation that black men have with their daughters is, yo, you better not be out here. Don't even think about no, um, don't even think about no man. But you know, do you, you, you know what though? I'm actually gonna have that conversation you, with my son. But do you want to know why? Yeah, right. Like I'm gonna have that conversation with my son. Like I'm not out here telling my son to go smash nobody's daughter. Right. Like nah. son, I don't. Will, do I prefer. Like I prefer my son to stay away from that. The same conversation as, I'm gonna have with my daughter. I'm gonna possible. have with my son. Keep that flower away from you for as long as possible. But here's a gym, and a lot of people might not agree with this, and some people will. That's our daughter. That's 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 our love. So. I think what our daughters need to understand is that the first time you be with the man, it takes from us. Like we're hurt. Mm. And I and it's a selfish thing, but I think that the daughters because men don't know how to express themselves. Bro, do you know how I'm gonna feel my daughter lose her virginity that you gave like you uh, like, You think you're gonna find out immediately or I'm not gonna find out you're gonna find out like 
six months later or I'm some not going to find out immediately because of the immaturity that I had before. She probably does not want to bring that to me. And that's what I'm saying about black men in therapy. Had I would have had a better relationship with my daughter, she might have been... You know, I don't think she. Nah, I still, I still wouldn't want to know. Well, nah, well, I think, it, and but you saying that right now, you know, you can, you can throw the monkey wrench into the game already by an interjecting conversation with her. Listen, I know the first time we talked about it might not have been the best conversation, but we did. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we, okay, I, I recently, a few weeks ago, I recently had to talk with my daughter. You know, and it was, and it was better than the ones I need, before. I need a shot. <laughs> it was For better. That shit. It was better than the ones that I had before. It, okay. it, it was more on some, listen, like, you know, I forgot what I said. Cause it, like once I start talking off the top of my head, I'm gone. Like, not, like So you gave her some bullshit advice, huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> I gave her a path. Like I made it comfortable, bro. It was uncomfortable talking to my son. Hit the bullshit switch. It was for what? Bullshit. For what? Not for me. Yeah, you. It wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah, bullshit. bullshit advice. Nah. <laughs> and it was uncomfortable talking to my son. Because I had to tell him. I said, son, this is about to be uncomfortable. But I need you to be honest with me. Have you had sex yet? Do you know how to put a condom on? Have you had a girlfriend? Like, my son told me. My son told me he was actually talking to a senior. And I was so mad. I was, Inside, I was mad. Cause like, son, you should have told me because he told me that, you know, she was kicking it with him. And I said, what happened? She said she slept with her ex at the prom. And I said, son, she was, I said, F-. yo, I was hot, son. Mm-hmm. I was just like, son, you know what she did? She had a car. And what, what people do, women and men, they like to impress the younger one. So she riding you around probably trying to impress you. You know what I'm Making saying? Him like you a pretty boy. You understand? Yeah. Trying to make some other dude jealous. Like you weren't ready for that game. Right. You was never part of her world. She just, you was just something to do. She used you. Yeah. She used you because you was a young boy. And this is, and this is what makes me nervous about my son. Cause I listen the same way that men prey on women Older women prey on younger dudes. Women man. attack first. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? It's the same shit. Like, I think women attack first. It's the same shit. Women it's, are very aggressive young. Especially with a younger dude. Like an older woman with a younger dude. You know what I'm saying? Especially a a, a 10th grader with a senior. I mean, you, you got to have a little bit of special juice or some type of some type of gems in your mind for you to know how to navigate through that situation. Most of us falter that first time facing that situation. Most of us always make the wrong move. I remember I was in the eighth grade and I was trying to talk to this, this Spanish thing. <laughs> Man, his name was bad. He used to sit in front desk, right in front of me in literature class. I wanted that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I want I, that. I, you know what? Dang. I want with you and I'm going to get you. I want you. <laughs> You know, I want you. I want you. And I'm going to get, get you. Get you. <laughs> now, we can do this the easy way. Or we can do this the hard way. So, nah. So, I, you know what I'm saying? I pushed up whatever made a little move. It took hella fucking talking to myself to finally do it. I'm at baseball practice with the homies one day. She pull up in the little yellow uh, Civic. This is like 99, 98. She pull up in a little yellow Civic with a little, with a little Puerto Rican boo. And I done got extra fresh for school this day. <laughs> <laughs> bitch told me she was coming to the softball field after school. Oh. I told all my boys, bitch coming to the, and she pulled up in the next car with another nigga. Mm. I walked home soaking. Oh. I walked home soaking. I was going to junior two at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I walk, and we was living on Locust Street. Did you, did you have on some big ass Jabos? <laughs> you know what? I think I had on some academic jeans. <laughs> I had on some academic jeans. Big ass academic jeans. <laughs> big, ass, <laughs> big ass academic jeans. The bigger your jeans were back then, the cooler you Facts. fucking were. So like, the I bigger your fuck. jeans, the cooler you were. Right. I'm swallowed in these shits. So I'm five fucking six in eighth grade. But anyway, so yeah. So like every man falters when he walked down that path the first time without that proper guidance. But at the same time, experience is the best teacher too. So you can't learn unless you you know you can't learn to swim unless you jump in the fucking pool. That sucks though. Just, just just being a father knowing that no matter what you tell your kids, they're gonna have to jump out there. And I just hope and I know I said this on a previous episode, I wanna give my kids the 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 gems and let them go out in the world and experience it. Just come back to me. Not not thirty years from now, but I'll take it when I can get it. Come back to me when you realize that the world is a crazy place. So then Everything that I say would then make sense. And right. then you'd be like, all right, pop, that's, right. that's normally how it is. You know what I'm saying? Your parents tell you something. Well, sometimes you don't people, believe them. Sometimes like, people don't want to go back 
excuse me, and say that you were right. Right. That's what I'm it saying. It depends on who told him, I guess. But at the end of the day, if you was found to be wrong, just acknowledge where you was wrong at. But I, I, and, I, and I can tell you that without therapy, I wouldn't know how to. Basically, what I'm getting at, without the therapy, I personally wouldn't know how to at least talk to my daughter and my son. Because that's important. Because we always want to tell our sons to man up, um, stop crying, do that, do this and do that. I think that there's a like we need to have the conversations with our sons. And listen, I was I was so happy that he told me that he had a, 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 a older girl in his life. And I was mm-hmm. happy to tell him what what just happened. Like, mm-hmm. what, this is what happens. Huh? Like, I'm mad that I didn't know about it at the time. But now that you went through it. This is what happened, son. And if it wasn't for therapy, I'd probably still be telling my daughter, no boys, until I'm dead. Yeah. You got to be realistic in life, bro. Yeah. You, but it's realistic to somebody who doesn't know how to articulate themselves. And that's why I say, can you be uh, 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 the best father you can be without therapy? Because if you don't know, if you're still, if you're still working on yourself and, and trying to figure things out, how can you be all you can be for your children? Right, because you still trying to figure out wow, well, wow, your st- dad wasn't there. But <laughs> even still, like even like, there's no manual to parenthood. There's no right or wrong way to go about this. You know what I'm saying? With raising your kid, like you do the best that you can with the knowledge that you have through your life, and you try to shape your kids to be, you know, what I'm saying better than you. But everybody doesn't know how to do it, and you know, therapy could help. You know, but. If you you just you just got to figure out the best way to I, I just feel like the best way to raise your kids is just through any relationship, man. You just got to talk to them. You got to know who you're dealing with. Like but believe people, it or not, believe it or not, though, that has to be told. I'm, I, I'll be honest. What? Talk to your children. Yeah. Like you got to talk to them. Like people don't people normally you, don't like a, as a black father. I'm going to tell you this. People think the main ingredient of being a successful black father is being there because nobody was there for them. So you'll think, well, I'm here. I'm here, damn it. Isn't right. that good enough? Oh, hell no. I don't know how to talk to you. I don't know how to relate to you. You might as well not fucking be here. But I'm here. And then you realize, bruh, you might as well not be there because right. you're not telling them nothing. You're not talking to them. Man, look, I, I plan to provide my son with all the possible information that I can. If, I, if he asks me a question and I don't know the answer, I plan on getting the answer. I would prefer for him to come to me over anyone else for anything, like, to be honest with you, I want to have that type of relationship. I want to have the type of relationship with my son I wish I would have had with my pops. You know what I'm saying? Now, I ain't going to force him to do nothing he don't want to do or uh, or try to force that type of relationship upon him. I want us to form our own relationship by the way that we bond with each other. But when we talk about communication, that's, my, that's a standard for relationships that I have with anybody. Like, if I can't talk to you, I, I can't really fuck with you. That's a fact. What are we fact. talking about? Hey, what you doing? Not now work. A word. What you doing after work? Going home. <laughs> the fuck do you want? Like, <laughs> what is this about? You know. So that's that's how I am. Yeah. You yeah. know. That's just my thing. Like I don't think we know how to talk. And so that was my thinking. I'm of, a great communicator, bro. You got to stop saying y'all and men and say us. But and as we, men, we, as men as a whole, like if you're no, but, but you no. do that a lot. Every time I bring some up, you say, well, that's not me. And I don't do that. And I get that. And that's not saying that I do it. Yes, but it is. no, it's just not. <laughs> we're, we're both black fathers. So we're all in this together. I'm not in that shit. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> bro, <laughs> I'm not in that shit. We're fresco all is a Fresco's class. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bullshit. Shit, ho. Yeah. Yo, I love dialogue like that, man. And um, definitely bring you some more of that. That's, that's kind of shit we that we, niggas ain't get growing up. Like, I feel right. like if niggas would have had more of those conversations mm-hmm. growing up instead of older niggas just trying to tell a bitch what to do and how to do it, like... That's a lot of youngers will be more respectful. Like, hey, man, go sit over there. Ain't your mama calling you? Man, shut the fuck up. <laughs> fucking talking to me like that. Nigga, who the fuck are you talking to? Well, you know what? Let's segue into another segment, man. 6 ix 9 and Ludacris. Mm-hmm. Now that you mention it, Ludacris was on Wild and Out, and they asked him. There was somebody dressed up as 6 9 and they asked him, who would you sign 6 9 and Ludacris? And Ludacris said, I'm signing Nick Cannon because who knows how long 6 ix 9 would be around. And six nine went into his random. I mean, six nine went into his usual. Suck my dick, stupid rant. Yeah. So does this nigga not realize those are like fighting words? 
Somebody, you can't tell me that, bro. You can't tell me. You can't tell me that. But then when you're six nine, and you're never going to see him anyway. But I think he. But he did not think. My bad. He did get touched a few weeks ago. He got kidnapped and robbed. But he he's around his homies again. So he's back to. Being. No man living can tell me to suck their dick, and like, it's not going to be a problem. So it's an automatic problem. I basically wanted to segue because you were talking about how you know the older people should have been there to talk to us. If a Ludacris is a legend, I don't care what nobody says. He's a legend. I fucks with Luda. Platinum records, platinum singles. Doom, 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 doom. He's went on. He's 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 a dope you actor. You laughed at me when I used to fucking play Southern Hospitality all the time too. What is this? What is this Luda shit? The new dance, throw them bowls. Do you want to know what my issue with you was though? What? Cause I like the song. No, 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 no. But when you listen to music, your first not my issue because it is what it is. You like what you like. But your first introduction to music seemed like it was like T.I. and Ludacris. It's like, nigga, you from New Jersey. And if I say Red Man and Wu-Tang, you laugh at me. But your first love for music, in my eyes, came from Ludacris. Came from T.I. Like, nigga, you ain't even from there. Mm. Am I wrong? I, I I listen to a little bit of everything. I've always listened to a little bit of everything. Now, when my when when music was becoming prominent in my life was the time of the southern hip hop rise in music. I got you. So that shit was everywhere. So meth and red man, and them niggas is getting pushed out the fucking door. I was in like I listened because you played it. You know what I'm saying? But so I knew about it. But when I go out and I'm with my friends and we going out to the club, they're not playing no goddamn red man and method man. They oh, playing shit. the southern shit. They playing fucking Young Jock and <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, this and I'm listening to it. No, but the first album that I ever listened to on my own, like I went and purchased it and listened to it front to back. Honestly, like I've listened to the music that you played, but the first album that I went and brought and listened front to back was Still Malik, Still Matic. Incredible, because I would have known that. I would not have known that because you just to play Ludacris and T.I. I'm like, this nigga. Like, T.I. was my nigga. I get that, but it's when, just like that shit. When that 24s shit. came out, ooh, money rolls, cars and clothes. That's how all my players roll. Burn and draw on 24. That was my shit. All right, but. That was my shit then. But before we get too deep into that, the 6ix9ine Ludacris thing. Legends, older people. So. Basically, Six Nine is mad that Ludacris kind of played him, but it was a joke. So we're 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 podcasters, and we mentioned Joe Button earlier. So let's just say somebody like Joe Button says, uh, who, "Who would you sign, the Podcast Brothers or or another podcast?" He's like, "I'm not signing the Podcast Brothers." Is that ammunition for you to say, "All right, Joe, I got you. Work harder to show you that we mean business," or are you like, "Fuck Joe Button," like? I'm like fuck Joe Buttons. Oh shit! I wouldn't. I, I probably wouldn't. Well, I probably wouldn't say it on a podcast. But I wouldn't. But that's the form where I talk my normal shit. So I don't think that would be outside of normal. But I wouldn't like make a video. You know what I'm saying on Instagram or no shit like that. Like I'll keep it within the basis of, of how, how I already behave. You start doing shit like that. You know now I'm stepping out my character. That's not. That's not. I don't. I don't really do shit like that. Yeah, I would. I, I would, so I would take it differently. If somebody said that they didn't want any parts of us, that would be me saying, "Damn, what can I improve?" So on? when Spotify wasn't putting niggas on, you was mad as hell. That wasn't. Uh, that wasn't a. That was trash. Uh, that what? This nigga. <laughs> that wasn't. Uh, no more Ciroc for you. <laughs> I'm good. Nigga. Fuck out of here. About? I'm straight. Yo, I think they watered this shit down because we about to drink this whole bottle and I ain't. Nothing. Well, maybe you're just an alcoholic. How you feel? You you you, you feel? Good? I mean, I was high before I got here, so I don't feel the, nothing. The like, liquor not really. This whole bottle about to be gone, and I'm just so just drink the rest then, since you're so tough for episode 100. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Go, you go right ahead. Yeah, chug, nigga. You see this nigga? Oh shit. Hey yo. <laughs> hey yo. He chugging a whole Ciroc bottle. He chugging a whole Ciroc bottle. This nigga wilding. Alcohol poison on the way. <laughs> Look at his face. <sighs> Let me get back to the show. <laughs> Let me get back to the show. <laughs> he didn't finish it, by the way. He, Niggas he, ain't chugging like, all right, you think I'm crazy? I'm, I'm going to finish it, though. I thought you was. I, it's all in my beard. God damn. Oh, yeah. You about to be fucked up. Now. Yeah. This so is great. I would, I would look at what we can do better. Like, if anybody was to be like, nah, I don't really fuck with them, I wouldn't take it as a diss and be on some suck my dick. I'm like, all right, what what, what can we do to be better? Because I want you to fuck with us. 
That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't really agree with 6 9 the way he goes about doing it. Even though I know he's trolling 100%. This nigga don't mean nothing he said. First of all, Luda will still tear niggas to shreds with his flow and, and, and lyrics. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear Luda shitted on T.I. That was one of the best disses I ever heard. And even though I know that... Yo, Luda can rap, nigga. Luda is dope, but do you want to hear bars from Luda dissing 6 9 no, I don't. I don't. I don't want to hear that. But I'm saying, I'm not saying necessarily that he's going to. But he would. He would. I don't really think. It, I mean, how long is Six Nine going to be around? Me and Can't my anybody really homies <laughs> for the top back, rolling on twenty. Roll out, man. Where'd you get that platinum chain with them diamonds? Yo, in it? I hate that when people be like you irrelevant bro like i've already done what you're records doing. Yeah, right right i hate that but that's stupid young boy talk i that's, hate that's, that i don't i literally understand um the old oh, the, the generation prior to us now where they say stupid ass kids like i get it now like i don't like listening to children <laughs> fucking talk sometimes Sean, i don't like listening to stupid people talk six it, nine, it fucking upsets me six nine's claim to fame is he has the most number one uh n- number one billboard charted hits in the last few years. Ludacris already did that. If I already did that and now I'm killing, I star in the best movie, in, in the best movie series in the last 20 it's years. It's a billion dollar movie. It's a every billion time dollar it movie drops. every time it Every time it drops. Bro, I'm right. doing fast. And that's why I be like. Then he said he was like, Fast and Furious. That's like, bro, Fast and Furious. It's six, you, six, so if they, if the director of Fast and Furious <laughs> came to you with Takashi, hey, we want you to we want you to star in Fast and Furious, you're going to say no. Fast and Furious is a billion dollar movie every time it drops. Every time. This, ah. this is this is what I mean by young boys. Like, this, like, it's nothing Takashi is doing that's fucking with what Luda is doing. Ever did. Hey, listen, and, 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 and that's my thing. Um, Respect, young Ludacris did what he did. He battle rapped. He he. Him and Ti went at it. He had number one albums. He's a platinum artist, and now he's doing movies. Signed his now own he's doing label. Shows, signed his homies. Signed his own. Got his own label. Uh, people on his label went platinum. Yo, I would tr- listen. What career would you rather have, Six Nine or Ludacris? Come on, man. You irrelevant, <laughs> man. You irrelevant, bro. I've already did it, bro. It's that's that's not even a. Why do they want? I don't even buy Why do they want rappers question. who turn forty to still be going triple platinum? Right. <laughs> what you expect me to be what doing you, right what now? What you want me to man? do? Now, if he was in the club still, you'd be like, you. He would have been like, you forty, you're still rapping in the club. I'm, you you that forty, been another thing. still rapping. You I'm forty, 39. and I'm, I, I look on the couch on the side of the club, and I see this old ass nigga in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, bro. Even like, though I know 6 9 is trolling, it's just like, bro. You just, it's, it's like, it's one thing to defend yourself. It's a completely another thing to tell another grown man to suck your dick. Like, now you, you already crossed the line now. Now I got it. Now it's, <coughs> you, you're doing too much. Now, the, crazy, the crazy part is it's becoming normal. Like, trust me, like, he's going to do it so much that telling people to suck your dick is going to be the thing and then i think i think it'll just grow normal it used to be disrespect it you can't boys it can't be disrespect now if he keeps saying it as many times as he you says young it. boys better watch yourself man y'all go following stupid motherfuckers like this who feel like they untouchable it can't nothing happen to them you go right ahead and keep up that disrespect man niggas not really with that so we're going to carry on tradition one more week we're not going to keep doing this we, niggas not with that but shit. we'll continue tradition over one more week with um hip-hop and this is our hundredth episode, and one of the segments that we used to do was "One's Got to Go." We haven't done that in so long, um, and we're going to dedicate this to the year two thousand in hip hop. So before we get into the "One's Got to Go" edition, I want to we, we we want to talk about what albums we were listening to in the year two thousand. Okay, uh, excuse me, I'll go first. And I left this. I left a few of these albums. Off the ones got to go because these are like my personal favorites. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that you don't want to get rid of them. No, I, I just don't think people like you or the other masses would appreciate. Like I Ghost, appreciate good music. Ghostface Killer, Supreme Clientele, Supreme Clientele is fire. Tony and Tiger lives on the road once again, once again. He, he loves the lady. lady. Hey, two, two months, months ago. ago. Let it stop. rain, let it rain, let it Can rain. Can you stop disrespecting my musical catalog? Bro, every time I mention Wu-Tang, you clown me. So I said, I'm going to leave Ghostface off because you no, thought Ghostface is a joke. But nigga, I, I like Ghostface. I didn't know I clowned you because you, you, you little old Wu-Tang. with it because you don't even talk about new shit, but you always resort to Wu-Tang, but so, that's it. So Wu-Tang Supreme Clientele Drop, a classic. Um, Wu-Tang, the W Drop. 
Prodigy, H and I C drop. C drop. Jesus. Half a mil, million drop. Let me oh, tell you something. Man. Let me oh, tell you something. Man. Let me tell you something. About, rest in peace to half a mil. Let me bro. tell you something. Just like two weeks ago, we talked about Nori NRE was a half hood. Half a mil was, was that a hood nigga. classic in Trenton. Million from half a mil was Damn, our I'm shit. I'm about to play that tonight, nigga. I'm, that shit just took me back. Real some quick. niggas' blood is some, some niggas', niggas crip. crip. Some, some niggas, niggas is thugs and some niggas, niggas is bitch. Some niggas is this and some niggas that fucking draining that's a rock bottle is starting to take its effect. <laughs> so Yo, there was a lot of was really that nigga. It was a lot that of it was, was a lot of good music in the year two thousand. But I'm gonna definitely go. It's a tie between half a mil and Supreme clientele, son. Like Supreme clientele and half a mil. It's like yo, Supreme. Like yo, half a mil had a song called "Ghetto Girl," bro. I dedicated Ghetto that to a girl. girl. Ghetto girl. You For you, I did the world. world, yo, son. I did, yo. I sent this to this girl. She said, "She like this is for me." Like oh that was the first God. time I did that. I, I gotta play that album, yo. <laughs> that was oh, my I haven't heard six, that album son. in years. That shit was really fire, and it was one of those sleeper albums. Like it was, it was a hood independent album. Right, that was yeah. back then when a rapper could sell a hundred thousand records, and you'd be like, On yo, his own. that was that was that was hood platinum, right? So talk to me, man. What, what was your favorite album in the year two thousand? My favorite album in the year two thousand, honestly. It's gotta be it's gotta be Prodigy H and I C H and I C my God Yo Prodigy I'll be the H and I C Shout out to the, the to, head Shout out to the homie Said Fred This is, yo This was the year two thousand the summer Locust Street Summers was lit We used to be on the porch all night outside on Locust during this time Talk about it The home the homie Kelly next door Shout out to Kelly Stokes Kelly was the, a Prodigy fan Said was a prodigy fan. You was a mob deep fan. Niggas love P, man. Yo, rest in peace to P, man. Said used to pull up with the white MP3. MPV. You know what I'm saying? And we used, it used to roll out like in the MP playing prodigy all day. We had the boom. We had the fucking radio on the porch during the summer. I think was this, I think was this the summer I got on punishment the whole fucking summer? I think that was the summer. I got on punishment the was whole it my goddamn fault? summer. No, it was all okay, my fault. Okay, all right. I'm just making sure. Uh, anytime I got in trouble, it was, it was always my fault. I could own up to that. I was just a fucking curious, <laughs> mischievous little motherfucker. But um, but yeah, man, and um, that album, the H N I C, just I remember actually, I think H N I C might have been the first album I listened to front to back. I didn't buy it though for myself, but I think that might have been the first album I listened to top to bottom. But um. Just to keep it thorough, like when when you heard that, doom, 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 this doom, nigga doom, started doom, off the doom, record. Doom. I break bread, bread, ribs, hundred dollar bills. Shit was over. You, you had to say nothing else. It was just and it, it, no hook neither. No, I keep it thorough, nigga. Let me back up on. It. Let me back if up. This yo, is, yo. If this is East Coast bias, I know, I know. East My Coast bias. Bullshit on the you ground. niggas wasn't listening to P, but in the hood where we from, the H and I C. I don't fuck shit. around, Dunny. I keep it's, it real. I'm thorough, nigga. Yo, I, um, so I, I would definitely say uh, H and I C by Prodigy because of the quality of the music on the album. That shit had uh, Y B E with B G on it. That was the shit. That was the shit. Uh, trials, trials of love. Guess that what I'm listening shit. to when I'm done? I'm listening to Supreme you Clientele H and I C, man. Yeah, I would say Trials of Love. Fucking uh, wanna be thugs. Keep it thorough. Uh, uh, I done dealt with the bullshit. Live, Live through, through the bullshit. bullshit. Like, yo, that shit. Damn. So keep a, yo, keep a clap with that real shit. My niggas do kill it. Like, that shit just fire. That whole album just takes me back to the summer of 2000 every fucking summer. We got a big fan base in Philly. So shout out to Benny Siegel. If I'm correct, I think Benny dropped the truth. In the truth came out in 2000 I think so. A Benny Siegel album dropped in 2000. Right so now. shout out to Philly, man. Um, so let's let's get into the ones got to go. So that was our favorite albums of two thousand, and I took a poll on Twitter, Facebook. Damn, Shine dropped in two thousand two. I, I took a toll. I, I took a toll Damn. on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for the same list. And one's got to go, man. Only one. Um, one's got to go and can never come back, and you'll be okay with that. So here we go. Eminem, the Marshall Mathers LP. Mm. This is huge because he sold. He sold one point seven million in a week, huh? Yeah, and I think and people want to know where the term stand came from. 
it came from this album. He had a song called Stand. Stand. Yeah. So now everybody has stands. Uh, Beyonce has the Beehive. Nicki Minaj has um, what the shit Dear Mister, I'm too good to ever write my fans. Um, <laughs> this will be the last. Everybody's pack. got like uh, 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 everybody's got like a stand following fan now. base, right? And, and it's basically come from Eminem. But yeah, that, that stand record was fire. Um, ja Rule three three six. Um, Ooh, baby. Triple platinum, three, three, numerous six. hits on that album. Bag, Nelly Country Grammar. Oh. Nelly, Nelly came out of nowhere, son, and sold ten million records. Oh. Respect, son. <laughs> Respect. That first his first single was trash. I don't give a fuck with nobody. Uh, I hated that song. I'm, I'm going down, down, baby. Are you are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You you was listening to that shit in two thousand. I didn't like it because it wasn't East Coast. Like, look at I was East Coast biased, but the more they played it. Um, yeah, I fuck with it. Country Grandma was the shit. It I, is the shit. I, I'm still iffy about that song here and there. Sometimes I listen to it. Sometimes I turn it. And then coming in the number four, Jay-Z, The Dynasty. Um, dum, 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 this is basically dum, like a dum, Rockefeller dum. album, but Jay-Z put his name uh, on it. Uh, you know, it sold 500-something copies in his first week, so it went gold right away. But one's got to go, and uh, one could not exist, and you'd be okay with that. So tell me what you got. What was the records on Rule 336 again? Put it on me. Go on, put it on me. Yeah. What would I be without you? I, go for, I definitely was I'll wearing. Only be without you. In ninth, in ninth grade, that was 2000. In ninth grade, I definitely was lonely. wearing half braids, half afro. Yeah, you did do, do that. You did do that. <laughs> you did do that, nigga. And I see you on Instagram talking about some Ja Rule got to go. And this nigga walking around with Ja Rule shit. <laughs> I definitely had yeah, the half braids, that. half afro in ninth grade. Shout out to my Granville homies. They see me. I was the only nigga. Don't do that. Don't throw niggas under the bus. Ray Sean was doing it yeah, too. Don't throw niggas under the bus. <laughs> Ray Sean was doing that shit too. Shout out to the nigga Ray. But um, that's the only one off Rule Three Three Six. Put it on me. Um, I don't know what this niggas got. I don't know that shit. <laughs> I ain't gonna front, son. I ain't gonna front at all. Now, I occasionally come across some hits of Nelly off the Country Grammar album, not just. The Down Down Baby shit. Whatever that shit called. Country I'm Grammar. Going, the Down Down Baby, whatever that shit called. <laughs> not down, called Down Down Baby. Whatever. It's called you Country Grammar. You shouldn't have fucking said it. <laughs> I'm going Nelly, Down Down, 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 down baby. baby. Yo street in the Range Rover. Scooping um, in the pop. So I can occasionally listen to some hits off that album. Oh, shit, my bad. Now, Jay-Z, The Dynasty... I, honestly, I don't remember that album this that well. I remember the uh, it's the one eight hundred hustler. It can't be life. It can't, can't be life. Can't be life is on it. And what's the single on the platinum Yamaha? I got the engine going, throwing it up like lick on an empty stomach. Skirt. What's that? Y'all don't hear none? Who that? Matt Nah Dog. The Zim Bleak coming. Who the fuck want? That's you, not the single. But what, that wasn't the single? single. That wasn't the single. But what was All right, the single, I can't remember the name of that song though. I don't remember the single. But okay, so. Marshall Mathers LP for me can't go nowhere because that shit got uh, I Am on there. That's one of my favorite Eminem songs of I all time. I sit back with this pack because it's and it's that. And it's weed and it's meat 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 Still a DMX fan. <laughs> I love niggas that get niggas, mad. Nigga just made a category. Don't give a fuck. I, I love, love angry rap. Nigga, if you mad and you talking shit, I want to hear it. I don't give a fuck what you say. That was that shit. I sit back with this dog. Pack. His just, flow on that, hit, yo, that shit was just absolutely amazing. Like that song still is fire. So Marshall Mathers LP can't go nowhere just for that one song. And on top of that, stand like that shit is just, that shit is edged in stone. I'm going to get rid of Ja Rule 336. Because to keep it a buck with you, I've never, I've just, <laughs> just never seen nobody's career get washed that way in a stroke of a fucking pen. Like, I, I just, after that happened, niggas literally stopped listening to Ja Rule. I, but I, see, it, that's, but, that's not the question. And, and, and maybe it's my fault for not presenting it. In 2000, not like see people were talking about Ja Rule not being relevant now and but in two thousand what album would you take away and why not because oh Ja okay. ain't irrelevant no more all right all right so let me rephrase in two thousand what album you could have done without I could have done okay so in two thousand 
M, Nelly, J, and in Child. 2000, I could not have, I could have done without the dynasty. Okay. In 2000, I could have, because as I stated, I was wearing half braids, has afros, and put it on me was my shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what I mean without you? Ugh. Vinny, Vinny, Vici. Oh, not Vinny, Vinny, Vici. Rule 336 was actually a good album. It was the other song he had on there was, uh, y'all niggas want that bag who? Y'all want that ride who? It's murder, murder with Vita and shit and them mm. other. Bur- that shit was. It was pretty decent. It was pretty decent. I don't recall. I don't, actually, nah, I, nah. Again, J- Ho, the Dynasty got this is life on it. I can't get rid of that. Facts. This can't be life. I can't get rid of nah. Ja Rule this gotta go. Be Sorry, I tried. I tried it's gotta to, be more. It's still Ja Rule. Ja Rule gotta go. Ja Rule gotta go. I'm gonna go with the Dynasty album, and here's why. Here's why. Jay Z doesn't need a Dynasty album in his cat- in his catalog. Nelly needs country grammar to come out of nowhere from St. Louis and do what he did. Oh, uh, that is history. That's hip hop. history. That's his ad libs, huh? He did it on. It's hot in here. He did it on. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Oh, <laughs> like how do you come up with that shit? I don't like know. yo, I be sitting here scratching my head. Like damn, what's a cool ass drop where I live? Oh. And Nelly just be like, oh, <laughs> the fuck? Like yo, why did I think of that shit? <laughs> Yo, this shit be pissing me off. That Cause shit. it be the simplest thing. It's simple as fuck. I don't know who told. Hey, yo, you know what? You, that noise you made, you should do that. Hey, on hey all your songs. Do that again. Do that. We'll do what again? That ooh, well, whatever the fuck you want. He uh, might have been. He might have been running from a spider or something. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> he might have said, "Oh shit!" But dude's like, "Yo, do that again." <laughs> hey, do that again. Oh shit! Ew. Oh man! <laughs> what the fuck Yo, was that? Had the niggas in this shit listen to this shit for the next week. Gonna be walking around like, Ew. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny as well, hell. I'm gonna go. Dynasty got to go, man. Jai you gonna get rid of this is life, bro? But yes, only because Jay Z don't need it. The next year he dropped Blueprint, which is Beanie the- Siegel and Scarface needed that shit probably. Beanie Siegel dropped an album that year as well, so he was eating. I'm just saying. Ja Rule had the shortest career out of the artists that we named, I think. I think. Like, he had the like, shortest like career. Everybody else has had something else. Like Nelly, like Eminem is still His rapping. Career was cut and short. Eminem, Eminem signed 50 Cent, which allowed him to keep going. Right. Jay-Z is still rapping. Nelly has done a lot. I think Ja Rule just had rap, and that's it. So Ja Rule needs 336. Like, he needs that. Like, if you take the dynasty from Jay-Z, he still has the blueprint coming next. Right. If you take the Marshall Mathers LP away from Elm, I mean, still but I'm got... not going to take that away because a niggas got other work. We appreciate the work that's provided. So I'm not going to take that away because he has other work that he okay. can stand on. I didn't like the dynasty album. Besides it can be life, I didn't like all that. Burm, burm, psh, burm, burm, psh. Like, Jay said, like, Jay has some trash beats on that dynasty album. Okay. I really didn't like, I really did not enjoy the Dynasty album. And I think that Ja Rule um, had his best year, Rule 336. And if you had to sacrifice something, I think that it'd be the Jay Z. Can't do Nelly. Like, who who comes out of nowhere? Who comes out of nowhere and does 10 million? That's a who? Fact. Put respect on Nelly name and Eminem. The, uh, he he had the Slim Shady LP, which we get, but then it come out and sell 1.7 million the, the first, first week. week. And then and then do Eminem the, was a different breed, and man. Then, and, and then do the stand record, and now the stand, um, 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 the 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 the, the stand, the way fans carry themselves is still a homage to Eminem. Right. It's like, bro, there is nothing about the dynasty where you could be like in 2018, it's playing some type of part. You understand? That's a saying? fact. That's a fact. So that's what I'm. Saying. You gotta you gotta look for that. You're not. Just, this is not going to come up on you. Like you got to look for the dynasty. There's no, right. There's there's nothing that the dynasty is affecting in 2018. So. That's a. It's, it's it's honestly of a of a certain era. Like you have to be from that time period in order to appreciate that particular album, or maybe those albums. No, no, no. That album in particular, because those other ones, Marshall Mathers LP and um, Country Grammar, are kind of like iconic albums. Yeah. If they are kind of albums because all the singles. Like I didn't purchase the uh, Country Grammar ride, album. But ride with me, come on, uh, uh, Ei. Ride with me, other late, other late, mama. Ei, Ei. Uh oh, what's, what's popping tonight? That was my shit, yo. So yeah. And uh, what's uh, 
Was Pimp Juice on uh, no, Country no, no, Grammar? No, 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 no. Relax. Ooh, relax. okay, it was okay. Not, it was not. Oh, I was about to say. It was country, not. Country Grammar definitely not going nowhere. She only want me from my Pimp you Juice. You ain't from Russia. So, so bitch, why are you Russian? Russian? This want my Pimp Juice. Ooh, 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 ooh. I, I think, think I, I need, need to let her loose. Let her loose. Let her that loose. That was my shit for Pimp Juice is she colorblind. Only... <laughs> it comes in all color, color, creeds and kinds. From ages 50 right on down the line. So I took the poll That's on um, social media and I, I got the results, drink no more man. Rock because this nigga put his lips all on the bottle. 42% went with Ja Rule. 42% told Ja to get the fuck Do out of here. Do you think that's because of what think, happened to him? I think they didn't understand the question. I didn't explain it well. In 2000, I think a lot of people were saying what you were saying. Oh, the, the rule 336 didn't age well. I'm not talking about aging well. In the year 2000, which album can get the fuck out of here and you'll be okay with that? Not which one aged well. I'd be cool if 336 was gone because I haven't... Like, even when I put my playlist on shuffle, never ever does a Ja Rule song come up from any time period. <laughs> like, and, it, and if it did, it would get skipped. Yeah, I'd be like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, what the fuck? What, the what fuck would you be without me, babe? Skip. Yeah. Like, yo, how can you have a fire? Like, it's a fire record that I don't want to listen to. It's past its time. I don't think that I wanted to listen to it then. It's, it's, I, I wanted to listen to it then, but it's, it's past its time. That's, that, that record or those records, by my definition, don't fall under the definition of timeless music. Those other ones do. So, off that, another segment that we used to do, which was short lived, was Pick Your Poison. You know, we did that a few weeks. Um, once Pick again, poison, pay, paying homage to, um, you know, the episodes that we did and the segments. So we're going to do Pick Your Poison. It's going to be a power edition. And, you know, we actually had power segments on the show. They say, hey, this is a big, big rich town. town. Doom, 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 yeah. doom, doom. I, I just come, come from, from the poet's park. park. Come on, you drunk. Stay on pace. Like, 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 like I got to make. Yo, you don't I'm never actually, know words, I'm actually, man. Not, I'm actually not drunk, son. Like, this is a rocket Drink trash. the rest. No, I'm just a rocket Drink trash, the rest. Actually. I'm drinking this. I'm drinking it. I'm drinking this. I'm drinking but, um, <laughs> We actually did some power segments, and we, we talked about power. So we definitely wanted to bring that back with the uh, Pick Your Poison. And if you watch Power, you kind of know that in the season, what, season five? Season yeah. five, Tommy and Ghost, the two main characters, both are going through some shit. Ghost just lost his daughter, and um, he no longer has his family. His son and him don't get along. But he has Angela back in his life. But who knows if Angela is really there for him now because she's trying to watch that her bitch own is back. In a hot seat. And Ghost is trying to change his life. At the same time, he still has to be Ghost. Tommy, on the other hand, that has, shit didn't even make no sense right there. What you just said? He's trying to change his life, but he still has to be Ghost, right? No, 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 he, no, no. I'm saying what it, you said the right thing about him, but in the aspects of his life. How you trying to change and you're still ghost. Right, because like, you're still sending out hits like right, Tom, like, like Kanan. I want you to kill right, like, uh, 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 the, the connect, but I'm changing. <laughs> right, the shit's just mad contradictory. Yo, if you don't watch Power, you got to watch that shit. Uh, and then Tommy, on the other hand, he's kind of like, he's he hasn't got nothing yet, but his father is now in his life. But I think that his dad is going to set him up for a rude awakening by, you know, snitching on Tommy and you know Tommy doesn't have anybody in his corner anymore so a segment that we used to do was called pick your poison so who would you rather be right now pick your poison Tommy or ghost damn damn um both of them are in some really fucked up scenarios um Ghost is still looking like he might go down for the murder of Ray Ray. He's still dealing with the death of his daughter, the murder of his daughter, call it what it is. And he's still dealing with his son hating him and his wife hating him. <laughs> That's a lot of shit. 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 You try to go to church and shit. Nigga got scared. Nigga went to church, church one time. <laughs> Yo. I'm changed. I want to be a change. I want to be a change, man. Take one to church one time. Had a conversation nigga, with a rebel. How much once. dirt you done did? <laughs> and he's still getting niggas killed. Still getting niggas killed. Um, Ghost pretty much always had a, a head on his shoulders, though. Th 
through it all. He he always thought he was sticking it through, but you know you can't control the actions of other people. So he tried to put these moves into play, thinking everybody's just gonna go with the flow, and everybody else got their own agenda too. So that's where he kind of get fucked up at. But I would <laughs> fuck Tommy. On the other hand, this nigga he got everybody trying to kill him. <laughs> 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 Everybody's trying to kill this nigga or put this nigga in prison. Like, you don't even at least got at least Ghost got the Queen Shot project in the club still. Like, Tommy really just has drugs. Like, yeah. Like he has no friends in the street. Kanan ain't his fucking friend. Ghost is his friend, but Ghost is trying to get away from that shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh Jason about to kill his ass. <laughs> like the DEA the, the Fed's been after him since season one. I don't want to live my life under a microscope like that, man. That's hard. Like I would get clumsy and fuck up. How do you sleep at night? How do you go to bed? I, I always ask myself about these. I always ask myself that about these characters on this show. How do you do all this shit all day and just go home and go to fuck the bed? Like, you know what I mean? I didn't kill about forty-seven niggas day. Face tried to lock me up. My connect mad at me because I ain't selling dope, but. Let me take. Let me go to bed for the night. Let me sleep on it. Oh, not, when I wake up in the morning, I'll be good. It's nine o'clock. It's my bedtime. <laughs> you know, I know I gotta kill this nigga and I gotta sell this dope and make this money package and make this money delivery before uh, a twelve midnight tonight. But let me just take a little nap real quick and just sleep it over and make sure I'm well rested. I'll kill you before, niggas when like, I wake what up. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> I'm not going to bed. Like I'm sitting by the window all fucking night. Sharpening my shank. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not playing. I'm not playing. I, that's how I know. I'm, I'm. I don't know, bro. I don't know who to choose because they both fucked up. Now, unfortunately, being able to relate what goes in regards to the loss of a daughter. Outside of that, I don't know what it's like to be hated by your son. That's something I hope I never have to experience. I can understand a woman hating you here and there. Shit, who the fuck ain't wear those shoes? <laughs> what nigga? The, what, what man don't know that like? What nigga out here ain't wore that set that pair of shoes? We didn't all <laughs> lace them bitches up. I can handle that. <laughs> <laughs> My wife hate me. Uh, uh, shit. Uh, worst yeah. shit has happened. <laughs> I think I rather. I think. I think I'd rather be ghost. I don't know. Ghost always seems to have a plan, and Tommy don't really know how to think for himself. I don't know. It's hard, but I, I'll just pick Ghost just because. <laughs> <laughs> ghost. Fuck it. Just because that nigga wear nice suits. I'd rather be. <laughs> <laughs> at least I look good. At least, I'm, at, le- at least I'm fresh and I at look in a I'm penthouse. At fresh. Tommy, on the other hand, he always wearing long ass black That same jackets. ass black leather shit. It like Tommy. How the fuck do he always keep getting away with shit when he keep, he been driving the same car since season one? I see you in that blue Mustang, yeah. nigga. You're not hiding. <laughs> You're not hiding, nigga. I see you. I rather. I, I, I'll just say I'd rather be ghost. Rather be. And then ghost. his dad telling on him and shit. Like rather. Well, be no, ghost. his dad told on ghost. Yeah, but his dad is kind of like un. He's undecided on what who he really wanna. Like he he like, has to die. He playing both sides. Yeah, Anybody yeah. playing both sides got I to get I think last episode, out. he was trying to give Ghost up, but this whole time... He did he give was, Ghost yeah, up. Yeah, but this whole time, he's been trying to give Tommy and Ghost up, so it's kind of like... He, he can't give Tommy up now. He can't, he caught a body with Tommy. He can't give him up. But he told him that already. He said, like, yo, we just did this. Like, he did that. He did that he to get Tommy. He that. He did that to get Tommy. He told somebody that. He, he did that to get Tommy in that position. Like, Tommy, you know... Nah, that ain't what he told the feds. He went to the feds and told the feds that ghost killed uh, Charlie Murphy in jail. Right. But I think that when they, when they killed that dude, I think that that was for Tommy, but I think that he's actually, he's actually bonded with Tommy a little bit. Right. And that's why he can't, you caught a body with the nigga. What you going to, Hey, he's selling drugs in prison. Nigga, (laughs) nigga, they told me to get information by any means necessary. So if I got to kill somebody to get Tommy, then that's what I got to do. Yeah, he did say, do I get full immunity? Yeah. Do I get full, full immunity? immunity? Fucking not. <laughs> 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 Fucking playing with me. <laughs> Damn. Pick your poison, Tommy or Ghost. I'm going, listen, with the loss of. Now I'm drunk, son. Huh? Now it, I am. It, it kicked in late. You about to be fucked up. <laughs> with, <laughs> with the loss of Ghost and his daughter and, the, and actually the loss of his son because his son don't want nothing to do with him. I don't know if I can deal with both of that pain. Like, if my son didn't want to fuck with me, 
I'm a, I would I would be hurt like if my if the time ever came when my son was like fuck out of here dad you ain't shit and I'm all drunk trying to get to him on the floor and I can't stand up straight I'm a, I'm a, I'm the next morning I'm gonna I'm be hurt as shit I'm so I'm gonna definitely hurt. go with Tommy for the I'm gonna go with Tommy for the simple fact that he might got a lot of people trying to kill him he can get out of here just by dipping off he can just disappear if he wanted to. Ghost got a lot of shit that he like. He really can't escape. Like he put his foot. Like he really steps in shit. Let's every not episode. forget about he got the upper hand on Councilman Tate though. But that's about it. Everything else, like think about I it. I mean, that's normally his whole life since the show started. When the episode went off, think about it though. Dre really want him dead. Kanan mm-hmm. want him dead. Uh, uh, Tasha don't give a fuck about him. His son don't give a fuck about him. Now you could say, oh, I'm trying to change, but bro, when your son. Like when you when when like bro, it's hard trying to change and sleep at night when your son Tommy don't have a son. Tommy just got worried about paying Jason. I appreciate the way Tommy. And he's came still to fucking too. And, and he's still getting the pussy from Keisha. So he definitely getting the cheeks from Keisha. Life is, is not no, that bad. No, 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 no. Them listen, Keisha, you look good and all, but them cheeks does not make my life okay. <laughs> like when everybody's trying to kill me it's, and put me in fucking it's jail. Ten minutes of peace. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that. Oh, shit, I can get ten minutes of peace jerking off. That don't make my <laughs> life no fucking better. <laughs> Who you pick? Tommy, nigga. I said you rather be Tommy. Tommy, Tommy right now. I, I I think that Ghost is dealing with a lot. I think Ghost is dealing with a lot, son. Like not only did he lose his daughter in real life, but he not, but not real life. But not only did he lose his daughter, but he's actually lost his son. And now you and your wife are officially over. Angela is really not really there for you because she's trying to watch her back now. Nigga, you have nothing. And on top of that, you're getting snitched on by a nigga that was blackmailing you in prison, by a nigga that helped you come up with the idea. <laughs> nigga, you have nothing. Then, then uh, 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 you got snitched on. By, <laughs> there's a lot of behind it. That's the, shit, that's the kind of shit I'm scared of. Like, people having information about me and using this shit behind my back. Yeah. That shit is terrifying, yo. Yeah. Motherfucking police pull up on your door like, yeah, you're under arrest. Oh, what the fuck I do? Yeah, we got word <laughs> you murdered like 16 niggas just yesterday. Like, what the fuck? How the... How you... No, I didn't, but I really want to ask, how the fuck did you know? Like, all right, yeah, okay. I, I did it, just, but how the fuck just, did you just, know? Just tell me. Cause, who told you? Because you want to know who told you, right? <laughs> who told you that? I'll sleep better tonight. Just just tell me who told that you. That shit's scary, man. I rather, I, I'm picking ghosts. I'm picking ghosts. So Pick Your Poison, you know, was one of the segments that we had. And another segment that we had was the Dope or Nope. Dope or Nope. This week. Dope or Nope. <laughs> For those that don't know, we have artists underground artists who are trying to get more music their music that they make the original great quality music that they make within their own time using their own money to create music we ask them to send us songs and we play this music and we allow the people who listen to our show to cast a vote on what they think on this particular record that we play on our show this week so who we got this week bro Trenton on Trenton's on Trenton New Jersey's on Black Collar Biz. Shout out to the homie. Shout out to homie Black Collar Biz, man. I've known this guy for a great uh for for a great while now and he's been working on his music since I've known him, most likely before. But since I've known him, he's always been um a guy who prides himself on putting out original music that represents who he is and I I feel like he's been doing a good job of doing that so far. So he had Trent his own baby. He had his on his radio show about two years ago when we first started the podcast, brothers. Fact though. So we was on there. It was that was like the first time I was able to call in. You was actually there. I was there in person, yeah. And I called in and we just that was the first time that we was like interviewed about our show. Yep. So shout out to the homie Black Collar. We 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 we, we salute you for that, man. You gotta come on the show. Oh, yeah, we got to get Black Kyle up here, man. That'd be Black a good Kyle. episode. I would and, like that. Um, What's the name of the record we got from Black Kyle today? Love My Haters. And Love I definitely, My Haters. I definitely wanted to get a Trenton artist um, on um, this episode for the Dope and Nope. That was definitely my goal, so I hit him up. He just dropped the album. The album is called... The Get Back. And it's everywhere. Apple Music, Spotify, Google Play, you name it. I like it. this artwork, too. Yeah, Let yeah. me put the artwork. Let me put it in the camera. Yeah, he's drunk. I don't know why he's doing that. <laughs> I'm giving my boy some promotion. Yeah, <laughs> Ciroc. <laughs> so yeah, um, basically the song is dedicated to people being around you that you actually genuine, genuinely love, but they hate on you or try to sabotage you. 
You know what I'm saying? So that's what that is. So this song here is called Love My Haters. It's off his new album called The Get Back. And um, yeah, we'll be right back. Facts. I'm not faked. A little bit. Oh, yeah. I see you niggas, but I ain't, you know. Uh, I know I don't. Madam less when I step, yeah, let's do it for the set, yeah. Hundred miller be the goal, uh, if they hit and keep full, uh, same nigga that's capping be the same nigga that fool. I don't know how to stop, watch him come from my spot, watch me bust down your bitch, after I bust down this watch. No good Vinci, I'm hoodie Kenny till I'm in the drop. If I got it, my brothers got it, see love to the eye, yeah. Bust a band, baby, gotta feed the wolf. Fire in their belly, shit, it's hard to keep them cool. Think they playing about me, tell that bitch to bust a move. Your girl be off the grip, that's why she loving on the crew. date with the devil and all I know is this money and now I know this they hate they scream at Tino that lost it and they ain't up for debate but play your track for your wifey and take a look at her face now love waking kick it on the weekend and this the situation when we drink it yeah I hold my breath and take a dive in the deep end I keep it to myself I treat my baby like a secret Tarantino what's up I might wear black for the whole summer I might call spread for my old number it's a vibe. I know this all the hate and know this why. I pat you on your back and stab you on your side. What's up? Perfect. 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 So that was Trenton's own Black Collar Biz with Love My Haters. I love my haters. Yeah, yeah. bitch. Uh, Shout out to Black Collar, man. Off the album The Get Back. Yes. It's available everywhere. Apple Play. Apple Music. My bad. Music, Apple Music. Yes. Google Play. Um, Spotify. Go cop that album. The link will be in the show notes. You heard. Facts. Now, one of our segments that we uh, want to pay homage to that we still do. And um, it's called Fresher Fiasco. Now, Fresher Fiasco is a, t- is, is a segment that Fresco came up with. And I remember I was like, yo, that shit sound a lot like the Officially Street Podcast um, um, official, unofficial. I remember telling you that. Mm-hmm. And I even reached out to Sayer. I was like, Sayer, we about to do the segment. It sounds like your Sayer. shit. And I just want to get your your stamp of approval before we do it. Like, niggas ain't trying to copy off your shit, but we got an idea. And he just, he gave us our blessings. So for those of you who listen to our podcast and be like, yo, these niggas, whatever, whatever, we got the blessings from the big homies, so we good. And then also, man, like there's nothing new under the sun anyway. So it's not and then like also, man, like there's nothing wrong with being inspired by your peers. Like a lot of people just look at us like copying all they doing. With listen, there's nothing wrong with listening to what somebody that you're you know is doing and be like, yo, I like what y'all are doing. Like I want to be a part of that, or I got my own idea or rendition of it. Just as long as you don't try to pull a fast one over niggas' heads, you know, that's when I feel like it, it. That's where the lines get blurred. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we reached out to Saya and you know what I'm saying one of the representatives of the Officially Street Podcast. Shout out to the to the uh, Officially Street Podcast, and we had that conversation because we didn't want it to come off as awkward. Could you imagine us, us doing it just cause and not? You know what I'm saying looking. Then I, I feel like that type of approach would have created some type of negative energy behind it. Mm. But for the fact that, you know what I'm saying, proper channels were 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 addressed, ain't ain't no biggie. Ain't no biggie. 
Yeah, bitch. So yeah, so shout out to the Fisher Street Podcast. Go check they shit out. They drop every goddamn Friday. Here. They, got they got a live, live show, show coming, coming up too, yeah, September 29th. Can't wait for that. We in the building. New York, Brooklyn. New York. We in the building. Yeah, yeah, we there. So, uh, Jersey pulling up, man. Strong too. So, my bodyguard with me, flaw into his biceps. I'm straight. Make sure I do a few extra, <laughs> few extra uh, 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 pull ups on the pull up ball. Because I ain't going back and forth with you niggas. I'm living my best life. <laughs> ain't ain't going back and forth with, with you niggas. niggas. No. So yeah, uh, Fresh and Fiasco was a segment. It's one of our newer segments that we actually are doing. We're still doing, and um, so we like to um, pay homage to that. Once again, we're paying homage to all the segments that we've ever done, whether we do them still or episode one hundred. Yes, sir. So Fresh and Fiasco, first one, and this shit pisses me off. Thriller is no longer the number one selling album in U.S. history. Fresh and Fiasco, who? Who, who has the reins? The Eagles, the Beatles, some shit like that. It's, it's like a best of collaboration type of album type of deal. The Beatles, the Eagles, some shit. Whoever they are, they piss me off. Um, I was going to say Fresh because I thought it was some new act or somebody, you know what I'm saying, fresher than the fucking Beatles. Because this is Taylor. The Beatles own enough records and shit. So they own damn near just as many records if not you know, as Michael Jackson does. So, yeah. I'm going to say Fiasco for the fact that it's the Beatles that broke the record. Not, no disrespect against the, the Beatles. The oh, Beatles. disrespect. Fuck them. Nah, no disrespect to the Beatles. I ain't going to disrespect the Beatles. You get recognized Fuck for your music. You. If you get re- if you got dope music and you get recognized for it, then, you know what I'm saying, you, you take over certain spots. I'm only saying Fiasco due to the fact that it's the Beatles and they've been making music what, longer than Michael Jackson, just as long as Michael Jackson. Um, you know that's hard to say because Michael got the. Oh, are we talking Jackson Five? Well, long, well, Michael Jackson been making music longer than overall. Yeah, if you're talking Jackson life. Five, I think Mike been making music for a long time. Right. So, I will say fiasco because we want Michael Jackson to stay in this spot, and I would have been more like, okay, well, somebody else came from, you know, what I'm saying a newer generation and crushed the music. And beat Thriller as the all-time selling album of all time, which is like, which is a record that stood for how many years? I'm all for records being broken and all. Except but. that one. Except that one. Man. I would love been, Michael Jackson, man. Right. Well, niggas love Michael Jackson. Absolutely. So I'm going to go for Yasuke. This nigga for, turned into a car. Fuck out of here. He turned into a car, bro. He turned into a car, son. You know what this songs? Nigga, this nigga stood and leaned like he just went. Forward. You know what Michael Jackson song always just makes me want to. Well, they all make me want to dance, really. But even the slow joints, like Stranger in Moscow, I'll be like, "Oh, Stranger in Moscow is my shit." <laughs> Stranger in how Moscow. How sh- does it feel? That's uh, my shit. How does, does it, it feel <laughs> when you're alone in your clothes inside? Like Stranger in Moscow. Yo, Stranger nah, in Moscow is that shit. shit, that, shit, huh? shit and that shit is slow as fuck, and you still want to dance. Like, how the fuck you still want to dance to Stranger in Moscow? It sucks because as as, as often as we debate with uh, generations of music, y'all can't fuck with our music, man. Niggas, ain't, name me an R&B song that can fuck with Stranger in Moscow. It's not happening. Yeah. No way, it's not happening. I'm going to go fiasco. I don't give a fuck about it. And I think that people have been uh, streaming Michael Jackson's Thriller all week to try to get that back into the top. Hopefully, we can get Michael Jackson's Thriller back to number one. But um, it just is what it is. Like We want Michael Jackson Thriller to stay number one forever. But it does look like that Michael Jackson and whoever took the number one spot is going to be going back and forth. Right, because you can look for it, their right, fan exactly. base to reply. Like once the news comes That's out, the that, whole stand movement now. Like mm-hmm. once once the news comes out that Michael Jackson has recaptured number one, niggas gonna start listening to niggas gonna start listening to the Beatles right, again. Exactly, right? <laughs> Fuck out of here! Wait, wait, where's my fucking drop? Oh shit! Oh, shit! Yeah, yeah so, bitch. <laughs> yeah, so fiasco, man. We got to get Michael Jackson back. To number one, man. How does it feel? How does it feel? How does it feel? Damn, that's mad music shit. I want to listen to. Moscow. After, this, after yeah. this episode, this is mad yeah, music I want to listen to. Mad music. 
Uh, fresh and fiasco, man. Um, young Dolph turned down twenty a a twenty two million dollar record, record contract. Mm-hmm. Fresh and fiasco. I'll go first on this. I'm gonna go fresh, go man. I'm gonna go definitely fresh. If a company is willing to offer you twenty two million dollars for your music, then that you should know that you're worth fifty. Yeah, facts. Feel like I'm gonna basically. Whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, let me drop some gems. If you're going to give me twenty two million, you got to cut that in half because of taxes. So now you're giving me eleven million. So basically, he turned down an eleven an eleven million dollar deal, which means that whoever was giving him this eleven million dollar deal knew that he was worth so much more. Man, if you're an independent artist, and this is the this is the era of independent artist where you can upload your own music to soundcloud apple music uh, uh google play or where spotify or whatever and you can make all the money off of it without a record label making mm-hmm. all the money off of you i'm so for it man 22 million a nigga could turn down that he know his worth so shout out to young Dolph, fresh son right i'm gonna say fresh as well because Niggas not turning down twenty two million just because, like, and Young Duff is pretty much he's he's made a decent name for himself and a living for himself doing what he's been doing already throughout his career, and you know I just feel like at this point in technology and the way that music is made, you don't necessarily need the backing of a major label. It's like kind of tying yourself into a loan. Don't nobody want to get tied into that to that kind of situation if it's not necessary and then niggas just making money off your out making money off your catalog long before you realize like like you (laughs) when you do shit like that like 22 million dollars is very enticing who's to say young Dolph ain't got 22 million already i don't i I doubt it but i doubt it i doubt that he got 22 i doubt it but i don't know you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that he got 22 million just for music. I you know he does not have that money in general. I I don't know. I don't know. From what I see, it looks like he's living a pretty decent life. And for him to turn down a 22 million dollar record deal, and also informs me that he doesn't, he's not thirsty for a buck. And it sounds like he just placed more value on what he's already come to become known for. You no, know, other than getting shot, but <laughs> for his music. <laughs> This is about for his music oh, and for how he, uh, how he goes about his business. It says a lot when a nigga is able to be like, nah, I don't need that $22 million from y'all. I'm good. That says a lot. Like it's- Son, that says a lot for, especially when you from the, let me tell you something. When you from the gutter, when you from the hood, these niggas take deals for nothing just because they just want a uh, uh, stunt for the hood. Right. This nigga turned down a $22 million deal. You know what I'm saying? And like, who knows what other type of, what other type of, um, what other type of things were drawn into this contract? You know what I'm saying? Like, who knows what? I think we're catching on. I think we, I think as a whole, we all know that if I sign a $22 million deal, number one, I'm going to get taxed. So I'm only going to bring home 11 million. After that, my catalog is going to be worth so much that you're going to take all of my money. Right. Like my catalog is worth more than $11 million. So you're paying me this 11 million, but when I start to sell, it may not, uh, kick back those those dividends, you know what I'm saying, and make me the money that I uh, that I'm trying to make that I was already making. But you pay me the 11 million up front, but now the sales is not going to reflect me getting the money that I was getting before I signed this deal. I don't know how how much money Young Dolph has, and I don't know how many records he sold. But what I'm saying to you is, if you do the math, if you sell a million records, that's damn near the minimum you can make is ten uh, million dollars because if you, you multiply. One million times nine ninety nine, basically ten dollars. Mm-hmm. That's ten million. So basically, they'll excuse me, they'll make their money back off one album if it goes platinum. So if I sign for twenty two million, tax equals eleven million, and I sign for like three albums, they'll make thirty million off me, and I'll take home eleven. Yep. Nah, nah, nah. If I'm already independent and I'm taking home all the bread. Let's keep it that way. Exactly. I'm I'm eating just fine without any help from anybody else. So, no. Now you just laying in bed with unnecessarily individuals. Your business got to be tight, man. Speaking of just fine, just for the record, uh, Boys to Men, I'm doing just fine is one great breakup record. If you're going through heartache, listen to Boys to Men. Doing just fine. It's a great record. 
Yeah, you drinking too much, bro. I'm not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> You're drinking too it's much. Just, it's, 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 it's a great record. Put that down. Fuck no. Look, this <laughs> is a, just a drop left, nigga. What the fuck? Like, nigga didn't drink the whole thing. You gonna tell me to put down that drop. All right. All right. <laughs> nigga was telling me I was drunk, but here you go. Fresher fiasco. Nicki Minaj says Safari paid 10 G's for his hairline. Fresher F- fiasco. 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 Because when you was fucking that nigga, you was fine with that hairline. You know? It's fiasco, man. Why can't a man get a hairline? I don't understand it. You got weed. All, all the shit that you women get. Tits, why can't a man? Ass. If I feel as though my hairline is not adequate and I have the funds to make this right to my liking, the same way you do with your body and all your plastic surgeries, I'm going to do that. And I'm not going to have no shame about it either. Now, it's a fiasco not only because of that factor for the factor that if a man has the bread to surgically enhance a part of himself that he doesn't feel comfortable with, I, is that a double standard? I don't know. That's what, that's how she coming. But not only that, but now I do understand that Safari says some shit about Nikki and he's corny for it as well. But most people have already recognized Safari for a corny person anyway. So nobody really pays attention to a lot of shit that he says. It's like, nigga, that's Safari. Like, fuck out of here. But, when Nikki goes on the radio and talks bad about her ex, it's just after all this time, I'm like, yo, y'all still fucking. <laughs> like, why y'all still trading jabs and doing all this unnecessary? Y'all been broke up for how long? Her and Meek been broke up for how long now? The whole Meek situation happened how long ago? And y'all still dwelling over this shit that happened between y'all relationship. Neither one of you are that interesting outside of your professions. And even then, yeah. <laughs> so it's like why trade these unnecessary jabs in regards uh, to, for what to you're already who you are you're already in both the positions that you're going to be in like what do you hope to gain or what extra from telling the world this man has a ten thousand dollar hairline it's I don't definitely know. I don't know. a fiasco if we're in a relationship and i've watched you get titties ass hair and everything under the sun done and all I want is a fucking hairline. And you, <laughs> and you, and you want to make a big deal about it, son? That's a all fiasco. I is, all I want is a hairline. All bro. I want is a fucking hairline. All I, that's I've it. watched you get butt surgery, stomach surgery, tit surgery, face surgery, surgery. nose surgery, lip surgery, like hair surgery, too. hair surgery. Nigga, all I want is a hairline. Every time a woman goes to the fiasco. salon, isn't that like hair surgery? You getting different. <laughs> Styles of shit. It's, it's like wild. woman her hair surgery. It's wow. I don't understand why she would even say that. And on another note, I think a lot of people swept under the rug the fact that she stabbed this man and he lied about it. Wait, literally? Yeah, she stabbed him. He said that. He said she stabbed him and he lied for her. And he said he was trying to kill himself. Like she's crazy. Oh shit. It's like there's a lot of things that Nicki Minaj is going dealing with, man. But Honestly, I still smash. Honestly, man, would you still smash? Because I would. Yeah, I would smash Nicki Minaj. Yeah, as long as there's no strings attached from the back. <laughs> I um, <laughs> I just don't. I just like Nicki. I will. F- I, will smash I just Nikki Minaj. like with the whole Travis Scott thing, with her whining about her being number two and stuff like that. It's like, here's my thing. Nicki Minaj has been popping for ten. Years, son. Like she's been really the number one bitch for ten years. This is the time for you to embrace the people coming up after you. Just like we talked about Ludacris already doing the triple platinum, already having the singles. Right. This is Cardi B's time. This is everybody else's time. I'm Nicki Minaj. I've already done this. Let Cardi have her first number one, her first platinum hit. I've already done that. If I'm still making music, I'm doing growth music i'm doing this is what i've been through this is who i am and i'm not worrying about the record sales because i've already sold millions of records cardi b can only wish to have 10 years if listen for all you rappers if a new artist comes along let show love just let them show love let them be in the lane they're gonna be and in. let them show you that they can do 10 years of work Nicki Minaj has been doing this for about 10 years. Like, it's 2018. I'm pretty sure she was out in 2008, right? I'm pretty sure. I believe so. 
probably. I'm I'm not I'm not too sure, but like it it, it like she's been doing this for a very long time. Three she's had not I'm not counting um the Queen album, but the three albums that she had were all number one, I think. I think, don't quote me on that. And they were huge. And they put Nicki Minaj in a position to provide for her family. I think it's at the opportunity now where she can actually make the kind of music that she wants to make. Also, let me also go on record and say I don't care if you sold a billion albums and the album that's next after you is half of that. That doesn't make that doesn't mean your album was the best. Wait, wait, say it again. What do you mean? If you sold a bill, if you sold a billion records and I sold a million records, my album could still be better than yours. My album could still be better than yours. Facts. It's more of a popularity contest right. at that just, point. Just, just because you just got because a billion fans, sold mill records doesn't mean just because you sold more records does not mean your music is actually better. It's gone, bro. Put the fucking bottle what the fuck down. What's the rock go? It's a nigga drank the whole. Nigga drank the whole shit. Just because you sold more records does not mean your album is necessarily better music. It just means more people bought your shit. That's it. We know that, but you can't tell somebody who sells a few million records that they but think we they need got the to, hottest shit. We need. We need. I, I need for a lot of these artists to be more realistic with that type of attention. Yeah, you. So what if you have number one and, and number two and Travis Scott is number one? You're number two in the country. Like, I understand, like, it's a competition and that's cool, but the people put you in that spot. More people cop Travis shit than your shit. It's what it is. When you win the game that long, coming to number two, it's not that bad. Like, no, it's hip-hop. it's number two. I think people Even get, if you're in a game for a short period of time and you hit number two, you can't get mad at number one? I think people get too confused with Jay-Z and what Jay-Z did. I think Jay-Z being on top for so long, they think that that's that. Look, but, but let's be realistic. And we talked about Nelly earlier. We talked about so many different artists. Nelly came out and had an amazing first album. Oh! But Nelly is no longer that guy. And guess what? He's okay with that. Mm-hmm. Because for you rappers, find another avenue. After three successful albums, I really think y'all should be doing Go something on else. Go loving hip-hop, players. man. Like, people really... <laughs> like, 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 people criticize 50 Cent. Oh, he's not relevant. Son, the nigga already sold 10 million records. How many, I've already did it. How many times can you sell 10 million records? I've already... What you, what you are trying to do... I've did it. I've... Did it now? I'm now I'm the director 50 of did power. It. Fifty did it twice in a row, son. I did get rich or die trying and the, and massacre, the massacre, nigga. I'm eating off those two albums I'm alone. Good. Oh, you're not relevant and, no more. And and every album that was released under G Unit Records went platinum, except for Tony Ayo. That's the one go. I'm not trying to be funny. Just, I'll teach you how to stunt. My wrist stay rocked up. My TV's pop up and it may best be. In. I'll teach you how to stunt. But yeah, it's like, you know, it's, it's only so often. It's these types of things only happen in someone's career so often. A nigga's not going to sell 10 million albums every album. He if fucking I drops. sell 10 million records, I can talk my shit until I die. For all you niggas talking about, something, oh, you're not relevant no more. Nigga, sell 10 million records. Like and Takashi even if you, will never sell 10 million records. He will never records. sell 10 million he was, records. He will never sell 10 million records. That's the part that gets me, man. So it's a fiasco that Nicki Minaj wants to put Safari out there. Like, y'all were in a relationship, and this nigga watched you get butt surgery, titty surgery, face surgery, hair surgery, toe surgery, butt surgery, stomach surgery, eye surgery, nose surgery, I, ear I, surgery. I think, I and think, all this nigga wanted was a hairline. I think Nicki gets caught. I think, I, I think it's a weird thing with Nicki. I think... She's expected to behave as a woman in music and in rap specifically when rap amongst men is still like a nigga. I did this. You ain't do that kind of thing. And I think we look at Nikki as though she's, a you know, being a woman as if, you know, especially at this stage of the career to take a different approach. Here's my situation. But I think she still gets caught up in the and the and the actual aura and the. You know what I'm saying, and here's, how it is of being an actual a here's rapper, my, and how that how that dialogue or that um, that that competition is amongst rappers. Here's my thing with Nicki. All the artists, and we talked about the year 2000. All the artists that we name has something something else that we're doing. Eminem is still rapping, yes. But Eminem signed Fifty Cent. Nelly 
bought a stake into the Bobcats and Nelly don't need to rap no more. He just does. Ja Rule, the reason why I say Rule 336 has to stay because Ja Rule needs that and he's able to feed his family forever off that one album. You heard? Jay Z is still making music, but man, he's the president of T. He was the president so of many Jam. business ventures. He's, he's been doing so many things. Nicki Minaj has nothing going on so deep into her career where she's still living off album sales. Mm. What are you? You have to put yourself in position Expand. to do something. And as far as six nine saying Ludacris is irrelevant, this nigga is doing Fast and Furious. This nigga hosts um, Fear um, Factor. Um, Fear Factor. That that's my point. Yeah. You rappers, if you're still rapping after ten years, that is your fault. Right. I'm ludicrous. I've already done triple platinum. And, I don't actually gotta makes, do that. And it actually makes you. Ludicrous for feeling like I should still be rapping at forty years old. So like, oh, you're you're you're, you're, you're a ludicrous nigga. motherfucker. I've been rapping for twenty years. I don't need to come. I don't need to do this. Takashi gonna be forty five with rainbow hair. Talk about still in the club. Talk about soak my dick, suck stupid my dick, stupid. <laughs> it's just no, I want to hear that. You're just stupid ass out of here, yeah, man. So yeah, that was our fresher fiasco, man. Um, yeah. So that yeah, that, that was it. That was fresher fiasco, and now. What we used to do, what we did, dig a hole. We used to dig, dig, dig a, a hole, hole man. got replaced dig by. Dig a hole originated because I just felt like I should be giving certain individuals recognition for their stupidity. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel like stupid shit happens, and when stupid shit happens, people try to sweep it under the rug. Somebody notices. No, we need to shine a light on the stupid shit. So that you or anyone else may not ever make these this stupid ass decision again. So that's how that came about, and it just became dig a hole because you know sometimes I was I don't know, I don't remember what movie I was watching, but it was something where someone literally got buried alive. They did some they did something that the boss of the movie ain't like, and he buried that ass alive. And I was like, you know what? A lot of motherfuckers need to dig a hole and bury them goddamn selves. And that's how that came about. So. We're going to throw it back one time for old time's sake. And uh, it's time for somebody to dig a hole and bury their goddamn self. Well, wait, wait, wait. Not dig a hole. Oh, oh, excuse me. It's still... Okay, so also, it transformed from dig a hole and bury yourself to what is now the 2018 version, which is... Fuck what is you doing? doing? And my man, J.J. Icefish, is going to lay it on you. Resonates every time. Talk, tell him, JJ. Hit him with the breakdown. Fuck is you doing? <laughs> now I know I'm not the only person who saw this. I know a lot of people saw this. Pusha T had a wedding recently. It released a lot of nice pictures, right? It looked like a pretty decent wedding, right? You know, celebrities in the building, everybody dressed according to how they feel comfortable. Well, somebody took comfort to the to the next level at a wedding. Kanye West. Was that Pusha T's wedding? No, no, no. That was um, Two Chains' wedding. Two, excuse me. Yes, Two Chains' wedding. Kanye West was at Two Chains' wedding. Excuse me. And you know he had a nice little suit on. You know I don't understand the thing with wearing a, a blazer with no shirt underneath. But whatever. I feel like that's for women with titties. But I, I just sweat too much to do some shit like that. I don't want the blazer sticking to my nipples the whole time. But his his suit was pretty cool. I didn't have a problem with the suit except for the fact that he didn't have a shirt underneath his blazer. So it was like a like a greenish, tealish color, or something like that. But most niggas at a wedding would put on a suit with proper footwear. Dress shoes, Stacey Adams, 
Crocs, you know, not Crocs, excuse me, alligator skin. That's what I meant by Crocs and things of that nature. You want to know what Kanye wore on his feet? Kanye West wore to 2 chains wedding a suit with no shirts underneath and some Yeezy flip-flops. <laughs> Grown-ass man wore a suit with flip-flops to a wedding. I would have kicked him the fuck out. Bullshit! <laughs> I would have kicked him the fuck out. <laughs> How the fuck did you put on this outfit? I, nigga, how do, you, how do you wear this and say, you know what? You know what's really going to kill this outfit? These little fucking premature baby air match slippers that I got. <laughs> <laughs> I put on a suit with this premi air match, Son. with these premi, premi, premi baby air matches. Sandals. On top of all that, the sandals were small. They were short. Bro, they, the they, whole they, back they of his heel dead. was hanging off the back of this sandal. Now, I ain't going to lie. If the shit was his size, it would have been... Com- it looked like they was comfortable. It was comfy. They looked comfy as shit. The they, shit was comfy. They looked air fucking soft. But, bro, what a suit to a nigga's wedding? Wear that shit to your own wedding. <laughs> Yes, I mean, you ain't come to your own wedding no flip flop. Don't come to my wedding no flip flop. Bullshit! Now we gotta take pictures from the ankles up. <laughs> I know Kanye don't has a lot of yes men around him, but his wife should have told him, "Babe, you can't fucking wear those. Not here, not with that outfit, <laughs> not like that." What the fuck is you doing? <laughs> like literally, how did you? Come to the conclusion that this was okay. I'm going to wear my new sandals to my boy's wedding with this suit with no shirt underneath. No wife beater, no t-shirt, just a thick ass blazer, (laughs) some dress pants, Mm. and some mattress sandals. That was three sizes too small. Mm. I understand Kanye is a visionary and he feels as though he can do whatever he want. I feel like if anybody else would have done this, but Kanye, it would have been bigger uh, talk about it. I, 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 I'm just not one of that nature. I believe certain shoes go with certain outfits, <laughs> like, right? Sneakers go with jeans and, you know what I'm saying? Shorts, depending on what the fuck you got on. Those type of sports sandals are more for, like, hangout gear. I got on sweats or some T-shirts. And the funny thing about it is I've seen Kanye wear, like, when he was all fat and shit, before he got his tummy tuck, I guess this was. <laughs> liposuction. <laughs> Whatever the fuck he got going on. Before he got his liposuction, I feel like when he was wearing his outfits with his sweatsuits and shit, he had on the fresh-ass Yeezys. That was the time for you to throw on the air mattresses, the air mattress 12s. Don't come to my wedding and wear a suit with socks and flip flops. I don't give a fuck if they're yours. Uh, for that, Kanye, I'm utterly confused, and I'm not really sure why you wore those other than for people to see them. But they're going to see them anyway because you're Kanye West. I just feel like you kind of disrespect the 2 chains wedding a little bit. Could you imagine one of your groomsmen or one of your friends showing up to your wedding with, with flip flops on? Fuck your wife you. gonna curse yeah, you the fuck out. Facts, facts. Did this nigga come to my wedding with flip flops on? This is your man's. What the fuck is going on, baby, 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 baby? Look, look, look. You know, you imagine that kind of explaining to baby. That's Kanye. You know? Listen, listen. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I told this nigga to wear hard bottoms. You know what I'm saying? You I, just gotta explain. Listen, listen. I got nothing to do with that. I told him what the way he wore that. He's here. I what the fuck you want me to do? You know what I'm saying? But as a man, you still gonna hear that from your shorty, and well, you don't want to. You still gonna hear that. You still gonna hear that, Kanye? For you wearing the baby air matches twelves, the premature fourteens. <laughs> <laughs> you got to dig a the hole. The premature fourteens. You got to dig a hole and motherfucking bury, bury your, your goddamn self. Yeah, shit is crazy. Right. Yeah, man, that was episode 100, man. Yo, that was, this is one of my favorite episodes, man. I go lie to you, man. Episode 100, man, we jam packed it with a lot of detailed conversation. Didn't know it was going to turn out that way, but when a nigga guzzled half a Ciroc bottle in seven seconds, 
this is the kind of shit that happens. <laughs> this is the kind of shit that happens, man. So, uh, again, bro, I want to thank you, man. You know what I'm saying? For introducing me to the podcast world and rolling with your boy through the trials and the tribulations and the personal battles that we have amongst each other. To be here doing episode 100, it's a big deal to me. I'm, I'm, I'm gracious as fuck. I do this out of sheer enjoyment because I enjoy fucking with the podcast and it's helped strengthen our relationship as brothers. So, and it was like your idea from the jump. So you came to me, so you know, you needed me. They called me. That yeah, episode it, of Martin. It, it, they called me. It does kind of suck to say that the podcast has strengthened our relationship, but you know, it our journey, our journey is our journey. You understand? Like, like people got to understand that. Like, whatever we got going on is what we got going on. Like, our family is our family. Like, we got a fucked up family. Like, like, like this isn't start. Everybody does. This doesn't. This doesn't start with us. It's just like you know, we are who we are, and you know, with this podcast, you know, we probably spent more time together doing this than anything in the world. And we talk literally every day for information in regards to the show. You know and what I'm saying? It's actually a beautiful thing to do this with my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a 30-something-year-old man, so I'm not going to call this man my little brother. So to sue this with my brother, it's it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, what we got going on, we got the um, the reveal, the, 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 the gender reveal party. By the time this album, by the time this episode is released, this is what will be on Sunday. So shout out to King Dean. Shout out to King Dean. I want to give a shout out to Donovan. Shout out to Peace. I want to give a shout out to Dominique. Shout out to Muffy. Those are the siblings. Yeah. It's us five. I also want to give a shout out to my brother. Um, I want to give a shout out to my brother. I'm drunk. Oh, my bad. Who, <laughs> nigga? <laughs> I want to give a shout everybody? out to my brother, Leon. Oh. I want to give a shout out to my brother, Leon. Shout out to Leon. He was on episode something. And he listens to all the episodes he supports. He's a doctor. He's, you know, married. Shout out to Hey, yo, Doc. Shout out to my, um, shout out to his daughter. Shout out to his wife. Shout I need to- an official marijuana prescription, bro. Help me. I just want to give a shout out to the people who <laughs> listen to every episode, 102 episodes, actually. I want to give a shout out to those that who listen to as many as they can. I want to give a shout out to as many to uh, those who support us. I want to give a shout out to um, those who get excited. I, I want to give a Sunday. shout out to those who live tweet us when they're listening to the show. I enjoy I enjoy that a lot when people listen to the show and they tweet us in regards to the conversations that we have and whether they they want to uh give their two cents on a particular topic or if they enjoyed a joke or a laugh that we shared on the show and they were like, yo, y'all niggas funny as hell, such and such. Like somebody, somebody tweeted me last week when I said it's hoes in church too. Just, they just quoted me when they just put mad laughing emojis. I I appreciate you. Yeah, like I don't know how much that means to us. Like right. I think two weeks ago, um, I forgot who it was and I'm sorry. Cause I didn't mean because I didn't plan on bringing this up, but somebody was just like, yo, there's so many podcasts that kind of like switched up and changed in the trash now. But shout out to the podcast, brother. Shout out to TOS and shout out to a few other podcasts who I can go to. And we appreciate that so much. I don't think y'all know how much that means to, yeah. to us when yeah. y'all say that, you know, we're one of your favorites. Um, shout out to those who, you know, you know, tweet us to say y'all are, that we are your favorite podcast or one of your favorites shout out to John Effect hey yo to John for, Effect, so, man. For, so for so oh, for absolutely a hundred yes. episodes this yes. guy has been telling the world that we've been one of his favorite podcasts yes, every time I listen to his show he says the podcast brothers is one of his favorites and I can't ask for more what well, I can ask for more but you know for him to say that every week you know means a lot and shout out to everybody who presses play. And, and John was actually like, I think the first person to listen to our show and tell people it's kind of how we met a large portion or got involved or inter- start began interacting with a large portion of, you know what I'm saying? The people who listen to the show is based on John um, out of Maryland with the John effect podcast, telling people, yo, the podcast brothers is lit. They this, they that. Like check them out. And ever since we, you know, what I'm saying, became acquainted with one another, he's just been showing mad love every week since then. So definitely, 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 
big shout out to the John Effect man down the man on the John Effect podcast. Go check his shit out. You did. Shout out to the Officially Street Podcast for being like Officially Street Podcast for being like older brothers to us. You know, even those though, are my guys. Over even there, though, man. And my even gal, though I'm Cherry older. Too. Even though personally, me, I'm older than um, I know more than Jay. I don't really think Sayer actually says his age. Sayer, I know I'm older. Sayer than like thirty seven, I think. 40. I think Sayer like 40. Some shit like but that. Jay like 26 or 28 or some shit like that. Like Jay's still young. I don't, I don't know if Jay 30. Like I, I might be bugging. But shout out to them for Jeff. Cherry 25, being, I think. Shout out to them for being like the OGs. Like, yo, like I'm not even going front. Like a lot of people be comparing our shows to theirs or whatever. Yeah. But they the big bros though. You know what I'm saying? Like I them niggas. Yeah, 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 fucks with That's them, the man. only. Uh, honestly, this is a crazy fact. In two years, they're the only podcast to ask me like to come on a show like they're the only other podcast that I've done that I've been a part of since we've been doing this podcast and we'll definitely be at their live show absolutely absolutely mm-hmm. I don't plan on missing it for nothing shout out to Philly for being our number one market shout out to the homie Killer K Kayla, you know what I'm saying? That's our, uh, being our the third, recurring guest. The third brother. Uh, host, excuse me. <laughs> Shout out to K for being Shout the third podcast the third brother. brother. Like, K- Killer K. I just listened to the uh, the TOS episode earlier today. She was on there. Shout out to Killer K. Um, it's, it's, it was a blessing to have her um, join the show because, you know, we need that uh, energy that she brings. And she's always about her health. And she's always bringing so many dope guests. And she doesn't know how much that we appreciate her and how much we mean to her for her to be like yo i rock with y'all so i'm going to take that trip from philly to jersey and come on your show means a lot to us absolutely and also shout out to my homie remy quiche shout out to my homie remy quiche but facts we, on top of facts before we met kayla and before we started rocking with kayla as often as we do we was rocking with Remy Keish. Keisha used to come through and be that reoccurring host that Kayla currently is. Keisha still comes through. She was just on a recent episode a few weeks ago. And, you know what I'm saying, I, I love Keisha to death. She's been one of my best friends since the ninth grade. And our relationship and our friendship has never changed or never decreased, only increased as we, as we became older. And, and, you know, we started to understand life as adults. So she's one of those friends that I can talk to on confidence about anything. And also, she's extremely supportive in things that I choose to do in my life. So, And her family is also still going through a very, very rough time at this moment. So she's I just she got to show mad love to Keisha for being the strong individual and the strong woman that she is, man. I love Keisha to death. That's my girl. Shout out to the Audio Fam Network. And the podcast that's, hey. that's come along. Hey. Like, y'all don't know how many inboxes I get from people saying that, yo, they're proud of us, you know, for creating another avenue. Because I think that black men and black people think that only thing they can do is rap. Like we created an avenue for people and we weren't the first. You know, shout out to um, Grown Folks Radio. Um, shout, shout, out to to, shout, Radio. shout out to them. You know, when um, it didn't work out with. Um, Saritha, I think I told her I wanted to be on her show. Like a lot of people don't know that Saritha, um, shout out to Red, she wanted to do a podcast, which she's doing now on Blog Talk Radio. She wanted to do a podcast, and I was like, "Yo, I want to be a part of it." And when I didn't hear from her, that gave me. I was like, "You know, what? I'm gonna do my own thing." So I wasn't. The, we, we weren't the first podcast in the city of Trenton, but we've created that network and we created that lane to show people like, "Yo." You ain't just got to be a rapper. You can be something else. You can be part of the media. Like rappers might need somebody to interview them. Right. And if we can't get on Hot ninety seven, if we can't get on the Breakfast Club, we can get on these podcasts and we can promote music. We can promote what we got going on. So, it's a stepping stone, man. and it's crazy because me? I got on a Retro Vert show. So shout out to Retro Vert, um, yeah, the Retro Vert. So shout out to all the independent. Um, people out there doing anything, trying to get their clothing line up. Shout out to um, what's your, what's your clothing line? Real regular. Shout out to real regular. Out I, Atlanta, Georgia. I love Shout the out way to the whole I love the way the shits fits, man. Like yo, Facts. I love the way we've had so fits. many people come on the show promoting yeah, so many different yeah, things, yeah, yeah. man. It's crazy, yo. Like it's amazing. It really is. And we just want to support. We just want to shout out everybody who has come through and showed us support and listen to our show. We don't expect we don't expect everybody to listen to all the episodes because every episode might not be for you. But 
for those that have listened to every episode, we so we appreciate you so much. For those of you who listen to the episodes that um, fit your topic, um, that fits you, and you want to listen to, we support. We we appreciate you as well. Yes. Um, you know, we the podcast brothers, man. I I, I, I wish I had the official numbers, but I. Th- I'm pretty sure we have been listened to over a hundred thousand times and that's not no bullshit. Like when we went through our little issue, I kind of deleted all the episodes and I deleted so many episodes and we was getting so many plays. We was doing like 3000 and this is not the the stunt or whatever. We was doing about 3000 a week. Niggas know what we was doing. And when we came back, we kind of came through fresh and there was just so many podcasts out and we just had to resharpen ourselves and basically we just hope to get back to you know being back as, in them better but at one time your boys was doing thousands and thousands of episodes and you know just hopefully we can hopefully we have you know shown you guys that we are back and we're not going nowhere ever like you don't do 100 episodes and then say fuck it nah it don't it don't work that way but I know we've been going on and on. This is probably going to be like a two hour episode, if not longer. But this is the hundred episode, man. What do y'all want from us? You know, what do you want from me? And this is episode 100. What do you want from me? Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts I if you like what you heard. We on Spotify. We on eyes. we on Apple. We on Apple Podcasts. We on Google Podcasts. We all over. What do you want the from me? Podcast.com is where you can find us. Yeah. And um, that's about it, man. Episode 100. Ho. Fresco. Flaw cigar. Oh, yeah, dig.